Have you ever been astonished by the colossal scale of construction mastery? Where the frontiers of engineering are expanded and where the ultimate architectural endeavors take shape. Today, we will traverse the pinnacle of mega projects, from expansive bridge construction to the longest tunnel systems. This documentary will reveal the monumental endeavors that are setting new benchmarks in the world of engineering. Singapore's deep tunnel sewerage system is an ambitious underground wastewater management project designed to meet the country's water needs through the 21st century. Completed in 2008, Phase 1 of the project is a key component of Singapore's approach to sustainable water use, demonstrating foresight in urban planning and engineering. Spanning a length of 48 kilometers, the main tunnel of the system is situated up to 50 meters below the surface. This depth is considerably greater than many urban sewer systems, such as those in older parts of Paris or London, which are typically less than 30 meters deep. The tunnel's diameter is also impressive, stretching up to 6 meters across, capable of handling an immense 2.2 million cubic meters of wastewater daily, which is equivalent to 900 Olympic-sized swimming pools. The construction of Singapore's project was a technical challenge, involving the use of slurry shield tunnel boring machines to navigate through the varied geology of Singapore, from hard granite to soft marine clay. The project cost was approximately $2.7 billion, reflecting both its scale and complexity. A distinctive feature of the project is its integration with a comprehensive water recycling plan, where treated water is reclaimed and then purified further through advanced membrane technologies to produce new water, Singapore's brand of high-grade reclaimed water. However, the project was not without its difficulties. During construction, there were challenges related to the variable underground conditions, which required adaptive strategies to prevent disruptions. Additionally, the deep tunnel construction near urban areas posed risks of ground settlement, demanding constant monitoring and precise adjustment of tunneling operations. With plans for Phase 2 underway, which will extend the tunnel by another 100 kilometers, the system will continue to be a cornerstone of Singapore's water management infrastructure. We travel to Japan next, where an even taller bridge is located. Spanning the Akashi Strait, the Akashi Kaikaio Bridge holds the title of the world's longest central span of any suspension bridge, measuring a staggering 1,991 meters. Standing 283 meters tall, its towers are higher than any other suspension bridge, and when compared to architectural icons, they exceed the height of the Statue of Liberty by about 93 meters. The construction of the Akashi Kaikaio Bridge was a feat of precision engineering, requiring over 1.4 million cubic meters of concrete and enough steel wire to encircle the globe seven times. Inaugurated in 1998, the bridge was designed to withstand winds of up to 286 kilometers per hour, severe earthquakes, and harsh sea currents. This resilience was immediately tested as it successfully withstood the Kobe earthquake in 1995 during its construction phase. Let's move over to Mexico next, where the Tren Maya project is set to be completed. The railway project, extending over 1,500 kilometers, will connect 19 stations and is expected to revolutionize transportation in southeastern Mexico. Tren Maya's construction involves laying enough tracks to stretch from Mexico City to Chicago, illustrating the project's vast scale. The train will serve both freight and passenger services, aiming to transport approximately 3 million passengers and a significant amount of goods annually once fully operational. The design includes a dual-track system for most of its route, allowing trains to travel at speeds up to 160 km per hour, which will cut travel time between key cities by more than half compared to current road travel times. The project's budget, estimated at $15 billion, positions Tren Meyer as one of the largest public works projects in Mexican history. Environmental considerations are integral to the project's design. The route is planned to minimize ecological impact, using existing transit corridors wherever possible to avoid deforestation in sensitive areas like the Mayan jungle. 
The trains are also expected to be powered by biodiesel, reducing carbon emissions compared to traditional diesel engines. Trendmire is forecasted to dramatically increase tourism revenues by providing easier access to remote archaeological sites that are currently difficult to reach. This accessibility is anticipated to bring an additional 1 million tourists annually, potentially increasing tourism revenues by over $400 million per year. The construction phase alone has created approximately 100,000 jobs, and the operational phase is expected to support many more. Trend Maya's construction process utilizes advanced geological and hydrological engineering to protect the region's numerous cenotes and underground water reserves. Techniques include elevated tracks and special tunneling methods to prevent contamination or structural damage to these crucial environmental features. We travel to Australia next for a big metro expansion megaproject. The Sydney Metro expansion is an ambitious endeavor designed to dramatically enhance the public transportation network in Australia's largest city. This project extends the metro service into the greater western Sydney area and includes the new Sydney Metro City and Southwest Line. This expansive network will add 66 kilometers of new metro rail. The project comprises 18 stations, which when laid end-to-end, -end, would stretch nearly 5 kilometers, long enough to cover the Golden Gate Bridge one and a half times. The construction of this project involves more than 50,000 individual tasks, and the cooperation of over 5,000 workers at peak times. The budget for this monumental infrastructure project is estimated at $10 billion, making it one of the largest public transportation investments in recent Australian history. Key features of the expansion include twin 15.5-kilometer tunnels, which are among the longest railway tunnels in the world. To put that into perspective, this is more than three times the length of the Channel Tunnel that runs under the Thames in London. The stations themselves are feats of engineering designed for efficiency and integration with the city's existing transport fabric. Barangaroo Station, for example, is constructed 42 meters below ground level, which is as deep as a 12-story building is tall. Sydney Metro's new rolling stock will also set a new standard for public transport in the region. Trains are designed to be fully automated and driverless, featuring real-time route information and the capacity to move 40,000 passengers per hour in each direction, which matches the throughput of some of the busiest metro systems in the world like those in Paris. We have to talk about the LNG Canada project. Situated in Kitimat, British Columbia, this liquefied natural gas facility is pivotal to Canada's energy export ambitions, positioning the nation as a key player in the global LNG market. This sprawling project covers a site of approximately 400 hectares, about the size of 560 soccer fields, demonstrating the massive scale of this endeavor. The facility is designed to initially process around 14 million tons of LNG per year, with plans to expand to 28 million tons in its later phases. This output capacity is equivalent to supplying approximately 70 million homes with energy annually. The total investment for the LNG Canada project reaches approximately 40 billion Canadian dollars, a figure that surpasses the cost of constructing the recent large-scale Gorgon LNG facility in Australia. LNG Canada's environmental strategy features cutting-edge technology that reduces carbon emissions by approximately 35% compared to other LNG plants worldwide. This facility uses renewable hydroelectric power for its operations, distinguishing it from others that typically rely on natural gas for liquefaction processes. Another unique aspect of the LNG Canada project is its shipping logistics. The facility includes a newly built terminal capable of accommodating the largest LNG carriers currently in service. These vessels are about 300 meters long, nearly as long as the Eiffel Tower laid down, which allows for efficient transport of LNG to markets across the Asia-Pacific region, where demand for cleaner energy solutions is rapidly growing. The project is expected to generate roughly 22 billion Canadian dollars in direct government revenue over the next 40 years through taxes and royalties, enhancing public services and infrastructure development across Canada. It's time to look at a gigantic useless supercollider megaproject. The Texas Superconducting Supercollider represents one of the most significant and infamous abandoned scientific projects in history. 
Intended to be the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator, the Collider was designed to propel the United States to the forefront of particle physics research. Launched in the late 1980s in Waxahachie, Texas, the project's main component was to be a 54-mile ring of superconducting magnets, buried underground, designed to accelerate protons to unprecedented speeds. The total cost for the Super Collider was initially estimated at $4.4 billion in 1987. By the time the project was cancelled in 1993, costs had escalated to over $12 billion, almost tripling the original estimate. The early stages of construction saw significant progress, including the completion of over 14 miles of the tunnel and the installation of infrastructure. Employment at the site peaked with thousands of scientists and engineers drawn to Texas by the promise of groundbreaking research. The local economy boomed with anticipation of becoming a global science hub. However, trouble brewed as the Cold War ended and fiscal conservatism rose in the United States. The project's vast scientific ambitions soon became a target for Congress, which was under increasing pressure to reduce spending. Critics argued that the high costs could not justify the potential scientific benefits, especially in a post-Cold War era prioritizing economic prudence over scientific supremacy. In 1993, the House of Representatives delivered a devastating blow by voting to terminate the Collider Project, influenced by a strong push from the Clinton administration to trim federal deficits. The federal government spent approximately $2 billion on the project, and Texas invested around $400 million in supporting infrastructure, much of which remains underutilized. The renovation of the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium, an iconic football venue in Madrid, Spain, is set to complete in 2024. This ambitious project enhances the stadium's facilities while preserving its historic significance as the home of Real Madrid since 1947. The project expands the stadium's seating capacity to over 81,000, slightly less than the Michigan Stadium, but with added luxury and technology. The total cost of the renovation is estimated at around 800 million euros, funded entirely by the club without public money. The Bernabeu's new roof spans 160 meters at its widest point. This retractable roof can open or close in just 15 minutes, ensuring events proceed regardless of weather. The development's glass facade wraps around the stadium, integrating it seamlessly into the cityscape and reducing the architectural boundary between the stadium and Madrid. The Santiago Bernabeu will also feature a new pedestrian plaza covering 20,000 square meters on the Paseo de la Casalada. Inside, the renovations include cutting-edge technology with the installation of a 360-degree video scoreboard, a first for European stadiums. Furthermore, the stadium's interior will house a new Real Madrid museum, which is expected to be twice the size of the FIFA Museum in Zurich. The new Bernabeu is equipped with solar panels covering 10,000 square meters, capable of generating enough energy to power 400 homes. This initiative not only aligns with global sustainability goals, but also sets a new standard for sports facilities worldwide. But what about an impressive underground traffic tunnel located in the United States? The Port of Miami Tunnel Project is designed to streamline traffic flow to Miami's bustling port facilities, while significantly reducing urban congestion on downtown streets. Completed in 2014, this $1 billion project introduced a 4,200 feet long twin tube tunnel connecting the MacArthur Causeway on Watson Island with the Port of Miami on Dodge Island. With sections reaching depths of up to 120 feet below the Miami Harbor, the Port of Miami Tunnel delves deeper than many other urban infrastructure projects, such as the Big Dig in Boston, which averages 65 feet deep. This depth was critical to allow unrestricted movement of cruise ships and cargo freighters, which frequent one of the busiest cruise ports in the world. The tunnel's construction utilized a world-class tunnel boring machine named Harriet which was specifically designed for the Miami geology. This 42.3 feet diameter machine was one of the largest of its kind deployed in the United States. Financially, the tunnel project was structured through a public-private partnership, the first of its kind in Florida's history. 
The tunnel is equipped with state-of-the-art safety systems, including 91 CCTV cameras. These comprehensive measures surpass the setups found in smaller tunnels where budget constraints often limit such extensive safety implementations. Despite its successful completion, the Port of Miami Tunnel Project encountered numerous challenges. Initial geological surveys underestimated the complexity of the Miami limestone leading to adjustments in the tunneling work that delayed the project by several months. Moreover, the project's deep excavation close to densely populated urban areas and vulnerable marine environments posed significant logistical and environmental hurdles, necessitating rigorous compliance with stringent regulations. Let's check out the Grand Paris Express, France's most ambitious public transport project to date. This colossal undertaking involves the creation of four new automatic metro lines and the extension of existing Line 14. By its completion, the network will add approximately 200 kilometers or 124 miles of track and 68 new stations to the Paris Metro, aiming to serve 2 million passengers daily. With an estimated cost of over 35 billion euros, the Grand Paris Express is designed to enhance connectivity across the suburban areas of Paris, directly linking various communes to the city center and major airports without the need for transfers. This project is not just about facilitating easier commutes, it's about stimulating economic growth, reducing traffic congestion, and promoting sustainable urban development. The initial phases of the Grand Paris Express have already begun, with a completion date for the entire network projected by 2030. However, specific lines and stations will open in stages, with the first new routes expected to be operational before the 2024 Paris Olympics. It's time to travel to France next, where the Olympic Games will soon take place. To accommodate for this massive event, the country is building the Paris Olympic venues designed not only to host the world's premier sporting event, but also to leave a lasting legacy on the city's landscape. These structures sprawl across several key locations in Paris, including the iconic Stade de France, which will serve as the main arena. This stadium is undergoing extensive renovations to accommodate over 80,000 spectators. The total budget allocated for the Olympic infrastructure, including both new constructions and renovations, is estimated at approximately 7 billion euros. This includes the development of the Olympic Village, which will cover an area of about 51 hectares. This space will later transform into 3,000 housing units, promoting sustainable living in the heart of the city. One of the most ambitious new constructions is the Aquatic Center, located adjacent to the Stade de France. This facility spans 15,000 square meters and features a temporary structure that can be dismantled post-Olympics. It includes an Olympic-sized swimming pool, a diving pool, and seating for up to 5,000 spectators. The construction workforce is another significant aspect, with over 30,000 workers involved in preparing all the venues. In terms of technology, the Paris Olympics will introduce the most extensive use of renewable energy sources among any prior Olympics. Solar panels installed across the venues are expected to generate at least 30% of the total energy requirement during the Games. The Grand Palais is being refurbished to host fencing and taekwondo events. The renovation emphasizes the enhancement of its Art Nouveau glass ceiling, increasing natural light and reducing the need for artificial lighting. The floor area here is being expanded to 72,000 square feet, about 1.5 times the size of the White House. The Seine River will also play a central role in the games, with temporary venues for urban sports. Let's visit the Delaware Aqueduct, renowned as the world's longest continuous underground tunnel. Spanning an extraordinary 85 miles from the Rondout Reservoir in the Catskills to the Hillview Reservoir in Yonkers, New York, this aqueduct is crucial, supplying about 50% of New York City's fresh water. It was constructed between 1939 and 1945, burrowing as deep as 1,500 feet beneath the Hudson River. Designed to transport roughly 600 million gallons of water daily, the aqueduct features a 13.5 feet diameter, lined entirely with concrete to ensure efficient water flow and structural integrity. 
The construction required the mobilization of 17,000 workers who faced the formidable challenge of excavating through solid rock and managing high-pressure water ingress. Innovative for its era, the project utilized both tunnel boring machines and traditional drilling and blasting methods. Operating under pressures that can exceed 200 PSI, the structural design of the aqueduct was a complex undertaking. Engineers had to develop special concrete formulations and construction techniques to cope with the pressures equivalent to being 460 feet underwater, initially costing about $160 million in 1940, which is about $2 billion today when adjusted. The Delaware Aqueduct's financial implications were significant. Beyond the immense cost, the project stirred environmental and social controversies, including the displacement of communities and substantial ecological impacts due to its construction. In terms of maintenance, the aqueduct has not been without its problems either. It suffers from leaks that lose up to 35 million gallons of water per day, necessitating a major repair initiative. A $1 billion project is currently underway, which includes the construction of a 2.5-mile bypass tunnel around the most severely affected section. But what about an entire Olympic park being left to rot? That's what happened to the Sochi Olympic facilities in Russia, which were erected for the 2014 Winter Olympics. These facilities were part of a monumental effort that saw the country spend over $50 billion, making it the most expensive Olympics in history. This ambitious project transformed Sochi, a relatively obscure Black Sea resort city, into a winter sports wonderland almost overnight. However, the glittering facade of success hides a less glamorous reality of these megastructures. The Sochi Games involved the creation of an entirely new Olympic park and the development of numerous state-of-the-art sports venues from scratch, including a ski resort, a bobsleigh track, and facilities for hockey and skating. While the games themselves were a spectacle, drawing athletes and spectators from around the globe, the aftermath tells a story of grandiosity giving way to ghostliness. Despite promises of transforming the Olympic venues into bustling centers for sports and tourism, many of them have seen little use post-Olympics. The Adler Arena, once the heartbeat of speed skating events, was repurposed as an exhibition hall, an underwhelming fate for a facility that witnessed record-breaking performances. The Formula One Russian Grand Prix, hosted at the Sochi Autodrome within the Olympic Park, stands out as a notable exception. However, this race was last held in 2021 and shows no signs of returning to track either. The Rosa Cuter Alpine Resort, though continuing to operate and even hosting some international competitions, struggles to attract the vast numbers of tourists initially anticipated. The maintenance costs for these colossal facilities are staggering, with the Russian government shouldering the financial burden to prevent total dereliction. Host Olympics, the park and its surrounding facilities cost the Russian government an estimated $50 million annually in upkeep. We have to travel back to Australia for the next gigantic project, which is called the Melbourne Metro Tunnel. This crucial development aims to enhance the capacity and efficiency of Melbourne's rail network addressing the critical need for an urban transit solution to accommodate the city's growing population. Stretching 9 kilometers in length, the Metro Tunnel features twin tunnels, each approximately 7 meters in diameter. The construction involves the use of over 600,000 cubic meters of concrete, enough to fill 240 Olympic-sized swimming pools, and reinforcing it with 70,000 tons of steel. With a total cost estimated at $7 billion, the Melbourne Metro Tunnel is one of the most significant public transport investments in Victorian history. One of the most innovative aspects of the Metro Tunnel is its five new underground stations, which are strategically located to maximize accessibility and integrate seamlessly with Melbourne's existing transportation grid. The project includes comprehensive measures to minimize its carbon footprint, such as energy-efficient systems and the use of recycled materials wherever possible. The tunnel's construction utilizes advanced slurry shield tunneling machines that reduce the surface disruption typically associated with subway construction. Moreover, the Metro Tunnel will increase the network's service capacity by 45% facilitating smoother and faster travel across the city and reducing congestion in the CBD by up to 15%. This enhancement is akin to adding an extra freeway into the city but without the accompanying environmental toll of increased vehicle emissions. 
it's time to talk about the Millel Viaduct. Soaring to a height of 343 meters, it holds the title of the world's tallest cable stayed bridge. The viaduct spans 2,460 meters with the longest single span reaching 342 meters and a deck width of 32 meters. It features seven concrete piers with the tallest pier standing at 245 meters high, which is more than twice the height of the Statue of Liberty from base to torch. The bridge was designed by the British architect Norman Foster and French structural engineer Mitchell Verlojux. The construction, completed in just three years and opened in 2004, aimed to alleviate summer traffic congestion on the route from Paris to Spain, which it has successfully done by shortening travel time by several hours during peak periods. The viaduct not only serves a practical transport function, connecting the Clermont Ferrand to Beziers in Montpellier, but also acts as a tourist attraction in its own right. Approximately 20,000 vehicles cross the viaduct each day, and its construction has boosted local economies by increasing accessibility and reducing transportation costs. It's time to investigate the Chicago Spire. Planned as a 2,000 feet twisting skyscraper overlooking Lake Michigan, the Spire promised luxury urban living with unparalleled views of Chicago's skyline. However, today it exists only as an infamous hole in the ground. Designed by renowned architect Santiago Calatrava, the Chicago Spire was to feature a unique, spiraling design that would include 1,200 luxury condominiums. The development was launched with fanfare in 2007, a time when the real estate market was booming and demand for high-end residential properties in Chicago was strong. The project initially attracted significant interest, with potential buyers putting down deposits for many of the units. At the time of its conception, the Chicago Spire was estimated to cost over $1 billion, making it one of the most expensive residential projects ever undertaken in the United States. The global financial crisis of 2008 was a severe blow to many sectors, but especially to real estate. As the market crashed, financing dried up, and the ambitious plans for the spire unraveled quickly. The project's developer faced insurmountable financial difficulties, including lawsuits from creditors and an eventual bankruptcy. By 2014, with only a massive foundational hole excavated and no structure built, the project was officially canceled. Nowadays, the Chicago Spire site has become a glaring hole near Navy Pier, prompting city planners and residents alike to lament its status as a wasted opportunity. Despite multiple attempts to revive the project under new management, including a 2018 proposal that also failed to secure necessary funding, the site remains undeveloped. The hole for the foundation, which is 76 feet deep and 110 feet in diameter, is a physical reminder of the project's lofty ambitions and profound failures. Colossal Aviation Hub, located in Poland and called the Solidarity Transport Hub. With a budget estimated at over 8 billion euros, the project symbolizes a significant investment in Poland's future connectivity and economic development. Currently being built, the transport hub encompasses the creation of a new, cutting-edge airport located approximately 40 kilometers from Warsaw, slated to become one of the largest in the region. The project is ambitiously designed to handle up to 45 million passengers annually in its initial phase, with future expansions planned to accommodate over 100 million passengers, setting new benchmarks for capacity and efficiency in airport design. The comprehensive scope of the project also includes the development of a vast network of railways and roads, integrating over 1,600 kilometers of new rail lines that will connect the hub with major Polish cities, significantly improving national and international transport links. Projected for completion in 2027, the Solidarity Transport Hub is poised to transform Poland into a major European transport and logistics hub. It's time to go to Austria next for the Brenner-based tunnel. This colossal project, designed to streamline European freight and passenger traffic, is not just a tunnel, but a groundbreaking achievement set to transform transalpine transport. Upon its expected completion in 2032, it will earn the title of the world's longest railway tunnel, stretching an impressive 64 kilometers, or 40 miles beneath the rugged terrain of the Eastern Alps. 
The vision behind the Brenner Base Tunnel is to provide a more efficient and environmentally friendly alternative for crossing one of Europe's most significant natural barriers, significantly reducing the travel time between Innsbruck, Austria, and Fordeza, Italy. The cost of this monumental undertaking is projected to be around 8.4 billion euros, a figure that underscores the scale and ambition of this cross-border initiative. With a construction saga that began in earnest in 2006, the project has required the mobilization of some of the most advanced tunneling technologies and machinery. The tunnel comprises two main tubes, running parallel and connected by cross passages every 333 meters, ensuring safety and accessibility. Traveling to Sweden next, it's time to look into one of the biggest mines in Europe. The Karuna mine is not only the world's largest iron ore mine, but also one of its most profound, with operations extending up to 1,365 meters below the surface. This mine, which has been operational since 1898, annually produces over 35 million tons of iron ore, dwarfing smaller operations like the Iron Mountain Mine in California. Karuna's expansive network covers an area of 174 square miles, making it larger than the well-known Karajas mine in Brazil. The mine's innovative use of automated drilling and haulage technology marks it as one of the most modernized mines globally. With over 310 miles of roads within the mine, Karuna operates like an underground city. Its depth and scale necessitate a unique ventilation system capable of circulating approximately 1,200 cubic meters of air per second. The relocation of Karuna's town due to mining-induced ground deformation is a distinctive aspect unmatched by any other mining project globally. This massive undertaking involves moving residential buildings and key infrastructures to a new site three kilometers east, ensuring the town's sustainability and the mine's expansion. The estimated cost of relocation tops 1 billion euros, highlighting the scale and economic impact of this project on the local community. The mine's strategic importance is underscored by its contribution to Sweden's economy, supplying over 90% of the iron ore produced in Europe. But have you ever seen this large abandoned ghost city, constructed for thousands of people that remains empty until this day? Ordos, China, often referred to as the largest ghost town in the world, epitomizes the potential pitfalls of overzealous urban planning. Located in Inner Mongolia, this city was intended to be a modern metropolis to rival Beijing and Shanghai, equipped with state-of-the-art infrastructure, luxurious residential districts, and all the amenities needed for a thriving urban center. The new area of Ordos, known as Kingbashi, was designed with expansive boulevards and imposing government buildings that echo the grandeur of major world capitals. Initially, interest in Kinbashi was high, and property values soared as investors rushed to stake their claim in what was touted as a symbol of China's rise. However, the reality of living in a remote, newly constructed city soon set in. Kinbashi lacked the essential organic growth that nurtures a city's development, it was too far from major trade routes and economic centers, and there were few employment opportunities outside the construction sector. Like many other failed megaprojects, the global financial crisis of 2008 and China's subsequent economic slowdown exposed the vulnerabilities in the real estate market, which was heavily leveraged and speculative. By 2010, it became clear that the demand Ordos had anticipated simply wasn't materializing. The streets of Kinbashi are now lined with empty skyscrapers, vacant apartments, and deserted shopping malls. Its public spaces, such as the massive theater and the museum, see few visitors. Infrastructure, though largely completed, decays slowly due to underuse. Despite the capacity to house hundreds of thousands, Kainbash's actual population has lingered in the low tens of thousands, leaving much of the city uninhabited. It's time to talk about the Mumbai Ahmedabad high-speed rail, also known as the Bullet Train Project. Spanning approximately 508 kilometers or 316 miles, this high-speed rail link aims to reduce travel time between Mumbai, Maharashtra, and Ahmedabad, Gujarat, from the current eight hours to a mere two hours and seven minutes. Endowed with a generous loan from Japan, covering a significant portion of the project's estimated cost of $15 billion, the rail promises to be a marvel of modern engineering and technology. It will feature 12 stations along its route, utilizing Japan's renowned Shinkansen E5 series of bullet trains, which are celebrated for their punctuality, safety, and speed. 
The project's ambitious goal is to be operational by 2027, although this timeline could face adjustments due to challenges such as land acquisition and environmental clearances. Let's talk about the CN Tower, located in Toronto, Canada. At 553 meters, this icon was the undisputed tallest freestanding structure in the world from its completion in 1976 until 2007. Imagine standing atop the sky pod deck. At 447 meters, you're taking in views that stretch over 160 kilometers on a clear day. Designed to endure the fierce Canadian elements, it incorporates 40,500 cubic meters of concrete and over 4,500 tons of steel. This robust construction is designed to withstand wind speeds of up to 418 kilometers per hour and is equipped with a sophisticated lightning attraction system that handles around 75 lightning strikes per year. Function meets form with the tower's practical use as a key telecommunications hub for Toronto. It broadcasts radio and television services across the cityscape, proving that this landmark isn't just for show, it's an integral part of daily life in Toronto. The journey up can be as thrilling as the view. In one of six high-speed elevators, ascend at a rate of 22 kilometers per hour to the main pod, which features not only the glass floor, but also a revolving restaurant that offers a 360-degree sweep of the city below over a 72-minute rotation. We travel to the country of Peru next, where the Almos Transandino project is located. Carving a 20-kilometer tunnel directly through the heart of the Andes Mountains and completed in 2006, this project represents one of the most ambitious underground endeavors globally, not just for its length but for its profound impact on the region's ecology and economy. Initiated to address severe water scarcity on Peru's arid Pacific coast, the tunnel channels water from the Huancabamba River on the Atlantic side of the Andes to the Pacific side. This engineering marvel plunges as deep as 2,000 meters below the mountain peaks, which is nearly four times deeper than the Channel Tunnel. The depth and complexity of tunneling through such diverse geological formations make the Almos Tunnel a standout project far surpassing simpler ventures in both scale and technical challenges. Costing approximately $500 million, this project deployed one of the world's largest tunnel boring machines, nicknamed the Andean Giant. This machine faced unprecedented challenges due to the Andes' notorious seismic activity and the presence of tough silicified rock, which required custom-engineered cutter heads to break through. The tunnel now facilitates the transfer of 2 cubic meters of water per second, which is intended to irrigate 43,000 hectares of land, equivalent to the size of more than 60,000 football fields. Moreover, the Almos project has introduced an innovative water management system that includes not only the tunnel but also a vast network of canals and reservoirs designed to optimize water use across agricultural and energy sectors. The project's location in one of the most seismically active areas of the world required sophisticated geological surveys and adaptive construction techniques to mitigate potential earthquake damage. Despite this challenge, the completion of the Almos Tunnel has transformed a once-parched region into one of Peru's most fertile agricultural zones. The Istanbul Canal is set to carve a new waterway connecting the Black Sea to the Sea of Marmara, running parallel to the Bosphorus Strait. Spanning approximately 45 kilometers or 28 miles in length and designed to alleviate maritime traffic congestion in the Bosphorus, the canal aims to create a safer and more efficient route for vessels navigating between the two seas. With an estimated cost hovering around $15 billion, the construction includes plans for new bridges, highways, and the development of residential and commercial areas along the canal promising a significant boost to the local economy and real estate market. The ambitious project has faced environmental and financial challenges, leading to varied estimates regarding its completion. Initially set for completion by 2023 to coincide with the centenary of the Turkish Republic, the timeline has been adjusted, with no definitive completion year currently stated. Once operational, the Istanbul Canal is expected to significantly impact global maritime trade routes, offering an alternative path through one of the world's most strategically important maritime corridors. We have to talk about Beijing's massive underground subway megaproject next. With its first line opening in 1969, 
The network has expanded to include 25 lines, encompassing over 700 kilometers of track and approximately 428 stations, making it one of the longest metro systems globally. This sheer size surpasses many other major systems, such as New York Subway which measures about 380 kilometers in length. Diving into the depths, the Beijing subway's deepest point is at the Daxing Airport Express Line which reaches 30 meters below the ground. The construction costs for this colossal network have amounted to billions of dollars, with recent expansions like the Line 7 and Line 14 collectively costing over $7.3 billion. One unique aspect of the Beijing subway is its adaptation to the city's geological conditions, which include areas of high seismic activity. The system is designed with earthquake resistance features that allow it to withstand tremors, a critical capability not integrated into many older and less robust subway designs around the world. Moreover, the Beijing system incorporates state-of-the-art technologies such as contactless ticketing, high-speed train sets capable of exceeding speeds of 100 km per hour, and an automated ventilation system that is considered one of the most advanced in the world. Challenges have been persistent throughout its development, including issues with overcrowding, particularly during peak hours where some lines see passenger loads far exceeding their design capacity. To combat this, the government has implemented dynamic pricing models during rush hours and has continuously expanded lines and added new ones to distribute passenger flow more evenly. As the system continues to grow, with plans to exceed 1,000 kilometers by 2030, it remains a critical component of Beijing's urban landscape. Next up, it's time to go to Dubai. Located here is Dubai Land, which was once envisioned as one of the largest and most extravagant tourist destinations on the planet. Announced in 2003, Dubai Land was designed to be the Middle East's answer to Orlando's Walt Disney World, expected to dramatically elevate the United Arab Emirates' position in the global tourism hierarchy. Spanning an area of 278 square kilometers, it was to feature theme parks, sports venues, and a vast array of residential developments. The original plans for Dubai Land projected it would attract 15 million tourists each year by the time it was fully operational in 2018. The project broke ground in 2004 with high expectations. However, the 2008 global financial crisis severely impacted Dubai's real estate market, stalling many construction projects and leaving Dubai Land in a precarious position. Funding evaporated as real estate prices crashed and the global economy sputtered. As Dubai's economy began to recover, some parts of the Dubai land project were gradually resumed, but the original vision was heavily downsized and segmented. Several planned attractions were permanently shellacked or transformed into more feasible projects. For instance, the Tiger Woods Dubai, a luxury golf community within Dubai land, was shelved indefinitely. Today, large portions of the intended Dubai land area remain undeveloped, with infrastructure partially completed and then left to languish, visible from nearby highways. The total investment in Dubai land was projected to be over $64 billion, making it one of the most ambitious entertainment complexes ever conceived. They are building the Mumbai Coastal Road Project poised to redefine urban mobility in one of India's most populous cities. This ambitious project, with an estimated budget of over $1.5 billion, represents a significant leap towards alleviating traffic congestion and enhancing connectivity within Mumbai. Currently under construction, the coastal road will stretch 29.2 kilometers along Mumbai's western coastline, linking the Marine Lines area in the south to the Kandivali neighborhood in the north. Designed to include eight lanes, the project integrates a combination of tunnels, bridges, interchanges, and viaducts. A notable feature of this project is the 3.4-kilometer twin tunnel, expected to be the longest of its kind in India, running beneath Gurgaon Chowpati in Malabar Hill. This engineering marvel is designed to expedite travel times while preserving the scenic coastline. Projected for completion by 2025, the Mumbai Coastal Road aims to significantly reduce travel time for commuters, cutting the current three-hour drive down to an estimated 40 minutes. Located in Leed, South Dakota, the Sanford Underground Research Facility is a pinnacle of science, situated a breathtaking 4,850 feet below the surface. This facility, which has repurposed the former Homestake Gold Mine, now serves as a forefront for scientific exploration shielded from cosmic interference. 
The transformation from a bustling gold mine to a sophisticated scientific research hub required an investment of over $600 million. At its operational peak, the Homestake mine produced approximately 40 million ounces of gold. The mine's extensive network of tunnels, which total over 370 miles, provides the necessary infrastructure for the project's deep underground science laboratories. The project initially faced significant opposition due to concerns over environmental impact and the stability of old mine workings. There were fears about water contamination and surface subsidence, which led to stringent regulatory reviews and the implementation of sophisticated water treatment facilities. The facility now houses multiple laboratories, where over 500 scientists from around the world conduct experiments. The depth of the facility provides over 4,850 feet of rock cover, which effectively shields the laboratory from about 99.5% of cosmic radiation that would otherwise interfere with sensitive experiments. Let's go to India for a revolutionary airport megaproject called Noida International Airport. This ambitious infrastructure project is under construction in Uttar Pradesh, India, and is poised to redefine aviation standards upon its completion. With an estimated project cost of over $3 billion, this monumental airport is anticipated to handle an initial capacity of 12 million passengers annually, with plans to expand to 70 million in the future phases. Scheduled for completion in 2024, the airport is being constructed on a massive site of approximately 5,000 acres, making it one of the largest airports in terms of area in India. The project's innovative design incorporates green building techniques aimed at minimizing environmental impact, striving for a significant reduction in carbon emissions. The Noida International Airport will feature a single runway in its first phase, with plans to extend to five runways, rivaling the world's largest airports. Moving on, let's go to Indonesia next, where Nusantara, the future capital of Indonesia, is a groundbreaking megaproject set to complete its first phase in 2024. This ambitious endeavor aims to relocate the capital from the overcrowded Jakarta to Borneo's more geographically stable environment, spanning an area over 256,000 hectares, roughly four times the size of New York City. The relocation initiative is driven by Jakarta's susceptibility to flooding, congestion, and rapid sinking, which Nusantara aims to alleviate with state-of-the-art urban planning. Designed to be a smart city, Nusantara will incorporate sustainable practices such as green buildings, a central artificial intelligence system, and comprehensive public transport networks that minimize carbon footprints. Nusantara's infrastructure development is massive, with the government budgeting approximately $34 billion for initial phases. This includes constructing new government buildings, residential areas, and essential services, projected to host a population of 1.5 million people by 2045. The city's design emphasizes accessibility, aiming for residents to reach essential services within a 10-minute walk, markedly enhancing urban mobility compared to traditional cities. Unique to Nusantara is its energy blueprint, relying 100% on renewable sources. This includes solar farms and hydroelectric power, which contrast sharply with the coal-dependent energy production in other parts of Indonesia. Economically, the project is set to create over 100,000 jobs, with a focus on high-tech and green jobs, aiming to shift the economic balance from Java and stimulate growth in lesser developed regions of Indonesia. While the size of Egypt's new administrative capital is similar, Nusantara's integration of environmental and digital technologies sets it apart as a model for future cities globally. The project includes plans for a central administrative district that is about 5,600 hectares. Transport infrastructure within Nusantara will be unparalleled, featuring autonomous vehicles and a ban on combustion engines within the city center. Standing at a colossal height of 246 meters, this turbine is taller than most skyscrapers in Europe. Equipped with a rotor diameter of 220 meters, the Nordlink wind turbine can generate up to 13 megawatts of power, enough to sustain approximately 20,000 homes. This makes it one of the most powerful turbines in operation today, dwarfing the average turbine, which typically provides between 2 to 3 megawatts. The Nordlink's blade length is around 107 meters, each blade being almost as long as a football field. 
The turbine features cutting edge technology that includes a lightning protection system, ensuring safety and operational continuity during the frequent thunderstorms common in northern Germany. The Nordlink wind turbine contributes impressively to Germany's climate goals. By reducing the need for coal and gas, it prevents the emission of approximately 42,000 tons of CO2 annually. This clean energy generation is a critical step towards Germany's commitment to phasing out nuclear power by 2022 and coal by 2038. Let's check out the Seal Tower, located in Dubai. Set to complete in 2024, it's poised to redefine the skyline as the world's tallest hotel. Soaring to a height of 365 meters, this architectural marvel will eclipse the current record holder, the Jevora Hotel, by over 30 meters. Designed by the acclaimed Nor Group, Seal Tower will house an impressive 1,042 luxury suites across its 82 floors. The building's floor area totals about 140,000 square meters, equivalent to roughly 20 football fields laid side by side. This expansive space is designed to accommodate not only guest rooms, but also an array of amenities, including multiple restaurants, a health spa, and a panoramic sky terrace. Seal Tower's construction incorporates more than 11,000 tons of steel, which is about 1.5 times the amount used in the Eiffel Tower. The use of glass in the facade covers approximately 40,000 square meters, providing clear, breathtaking views from every suite and public space within the hotel. Upon completion, Seal Tower is expected to attract around 3 million visitors annually. The investment in Seal Tower is substantial, with costs estimated to exceed $1 billion. In comparison to other global landmarks, Seal Tower's total usable height will be over 100 meters taller than the Shard in London, currently one of the tallest buildings in Europe. Additionally, the building will include an advanced fire safety system that exceeds the current Dubai Civil Defense Codes, reflecting lessons learned from other high-rise fires in Dubai's history. We travel to Japan for a city megaproject. The country is set to unveil Woven City in 2024, a fully integrated smart city located at the base of Mount Fuji. This pioneering project, spearheaded by Toyota, covers an area of 175 acres, equivalent to about 100 football fields, and is designed as a living laboratory for futuristic technologies. Woven City's design incorporates three types of streets, one for faster vehicles, one for a mix of lower speed, personal mobility, and pedestrians, and one for pedestrians only. This segregation aims to optimize traffic flow and enhance safety in urban settings. Toyota plans to populate Woven City with 360 residents initially, mainly consisting of its employees and their families, with plans to expand the population to over 2,000 people including scientists, researchers, and tourists. The infrastructure of Woven City is another marvel, boasting a 100% sustainable energy supply, primarily through hydrogen fuel cells, a significant leap towards carbon neutrality. The building materials in Woven City will include traditional wood with a modern twist, incorporating robotic production methods to maximize durability and environmental efficiency. The use of wood aims to reduce the carbon footprint associated with concrete and steel construction. The city also integrates extensive green spaces, equivalent in area to nearly 25 Olympic-sized swimming pools, designed to improve air quality and provide residents with open, naturalistic environments. The city's waste management system will be highly automated, utilizing technology to sort and recycle waste, significantly reducing the per capita waste production compared to traditional cities. Transport within the city will include autonomous vehicles only, ensuring a safe and wholly integrated transport system. This aligns with Toyota's vision for a mobility company, transitioning from their traditional role as a car manufacturer. Let's move over to the United Kingdom, who are working on a project that will change British transportation, called the Lower Thames Crossing. This ambitious endeavor aims to construct a new 14.3-mile road link, including a 2.6-mile tunnel beneath the River Thames. Once completed, it will hold the distinction of being the longest road tunnel in the UK, significantly easing congestion on the existing Dartford Crossing and enhancing connectivity between Essex and Kent. This project, with an estimated cost of around £8.2 billion, is designed not only to facilitate smoother traffic flow but also to spur economic growth by improving access to major ports, 
and distribution centers. The Lower Thames Crossing is expected to handle approximately 4.5 million heavy goods vehicles in its first year, showcasing its critical role in supporting the UK's logistics and supply chain. Initially targeted for completion in the late 2020 seconds, the project's timeline has been adjusted, with the latest projections setting the opening date in the early 2030 seconds. But what about a giant Olympic village that became completely useless today? The 2004 Athens Olympics were envisioned as a triumphant return of the modern games to their ancient birthplace. The city embarked on an extensive building spree ahead of the games, constructing new sports complexes and upgrading infrastructure at an estimated cost of over $11 billion. At their conclusion, the 2004 games were considered a logistical success, having hosted 10,625 athletes, the largest number ever at the time. The event itself ran smoothly, but the problems began soon after the closing ceremony. Many of the Olympic venues quickly fell into disuse after the games ended. The once buzzing Olympic Village, the Canoe Slalom Center, and the Baseball Stadium are now in various states of decay. Lack of planning for post-Olympic use has resulted in these facilities resembling ghost towns, starkly illustrating the consequences of inadequate legacy planning. The financial repercussions of the games were severe for Greece, a country that would soon find itself at the epicenter of the Eurozone financial crisis. The debt incurred from the Olympics added strain to the nation's already fragile economic condition. A 2013 report from the University of Oxford labeled the Athens Olympics as one of the most overt examples of poorly judged spending noting that many of the facilities were built without any plans for future use. Despite the initial projections, visitor numbers to the Olympic venues post-games have consistently fallen short. For example, the Hellenico Olympic Complex, which cost hundreds of millions of euros to construct, attracted fewer than a hundred visitors on some days in the years following the Olympics. But what about an entire failed eco-city? The Bayhetan Dam, located on the Jinshu River, is one of the most formidable hydroelectric power stations in the world. At a height of 289 meters, this arch dam has the capacity to produce a massive 16,000 megawatts of power through its 16 turbines. Designed for more than just power generation, Bayhetan also plays a crucial role in flood control, irrigation, and river navigation enhancement. It creates a reservoir that holds 20.6 billion cubic meters of water, almost double the volume of Lake Mead, the largest reservoir in the United States. Upon completion, Bayhetan Dam has significantly bolstered China's renewable energy portfolio, aligning with the country's ambitious goals to reduce reliance on coal and cut carbon emissions. It serves as a critical element in China's West-East power transmission strategy, which aims to supply the eastern regions with clean, renewable energy generated from the western provinces. It's time to travel to the seas now for the Trolla platform, located in the North Sea. At 472 meters tall, it is not only the tallest structure ever moved by mankind but also surpasses the Petrona's twin towers in height. This gas production platform is primarily stationed in the Troll Gas Field, about 80 kilometers northwest of Bergen, Norway. Constructed with prodigious dimensions, Troll A's total weight is over 1.2 million tons, including ballast, a mass greater than the heaviest man-made objects ever moved. The platform's legs are each 1.2 meters in diameter, extending 303 meters below the sea level into the seabed. Commissioned by Statoil, the platform began operations in 1996. Remarkably, it features accommodation to house up to 200 workers who manage its daily operations. The deck carries all the equipment necessary for drilling and gas extraction, arranged to maximize efficiency and safety. The platform's elevation above the water is 369 meters, which is taller than the Eiffel Tower, providing a stark perspective on its monumental scale. Trollet is also equipped with cutting-edge technology to handle daily gas production of about 83 million cubic meters, the high efficiency of which underscores Norway's leading role in the global energy sector. Rising majestically above Seoul, the Lot World Tower stands as a pinnacle of architectural innovation and the tallest skyscraper in South Korea at 555 meters. Surpassing the One World Trade Center by 14 meters, it is ranked as the fifth tallest building globally. 
Designed to withstand the challenges of extreme weather, Lot World Tower features a sleek, tapered design that minimizes wind pressure, a necessity in its lofty position above the bustling city. The structure is built with over 52,800 cubic meters of concrete and supported by a weighty 430,000 tons of steel, amounting to more than the iron used in the Eiffel Tower. Lot World Tower also features the world's fastest double-decker elevators, known as Sky Shuttle, which can travel from the ground floor to the 121st floor in one minute, reaching speeds of 600 meters per minute. We move over to Taiwan, where the KSN Station project is well underway. This mega-project, part of the larger redevelopment of KSN's transportation infrastructure, aims to connect the city more efficiently both locally and internationally. The new Kaesung station covers a sprawling area of 8.5 hectares, roughly equivalent to 11 soccer fields laid side by side, making it one of the largest railway stations under construction worldwide. This expansive scale is designed to accommodate the station's role as a hub not only for rail travel but also for metro and bus services, integrating several modes of transport in one location. With a projected cost of over $1 billion, this station is a major investment in Taiwan's infrastructure, comparable in scope and ambition to projects like the Grand Paris Express in France. The station will include 15 tracks and 5 platforms, significantly increasing its capacity to handle up to 250,000 passengers daily, which is close to the capacity seen in London's Waterloo Station, Europe's busiest railway station. The construction of Kaesung Station involves over 4,000 workers, utilizing advanced building technologies including seismic isolators, which are critical in Taiwan's earthquake-prone environment. The station's interior will house a large art installation that reflects local culture and history, aiming to connect passengers with the heritage of Kaesung. The Navi Mumbai International Airport is poised to become a pivotal gateway to India, addressing the surging air traffic demands in Mumbai and its metropolitan region. This ambitious project is being developed to complement the existing C.A. Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj International Airport, with the goal of handling up to 60 million passengers annually by the end of its phased construction. With an estimated cost of over $2.5 billion, Navi Airport is set to sprawl across approximately 1,160 hectares of land. Originally slated for completion by 2019, the project has faced delays due to various challenges, including land acquisition and environmental concerns. The latest updates suggest a phased opening, with the first phase now expected to be operational by late 2024. Let's travel to the United States, where the Gateway Arch is located. At 192 meters or 630 feet, it is the tallest arch in the world and the tallest man-made monument in the Western Hemisphere. It was designed by Finnish-American architect Eero Saarinen in 1947 and completed in 1965. The arch's exterior is clad in stainless steel, making it the world's tallest stainless steel monument. This material choice not only contributes to its gleaming appearance, but also reflects its surroundings. Building the Gateway Arch was a feat of engineering, requiring the precise fabrication of 142 stainless steel sections. Moreover, the arch is hollow, containing a unique tram system that carries visitors to an observation area at the top, offering sweeping views of St. Louis and the Mississippi River. Its construction cost approximately $13 million at the time, which is around $100 million today. It's time to travel to Europe for one of the tallest wind turbines across the globe, called the Nordlink Wind Turbine. It's time to move on to neighboring country Denmark, where the Great Belt Bridge stands as the tallest bridge in the country. Officially known as the East Bridge, it boasts the world's third longest suspension bridge span. With a monumental stretch of 1,624 meters between its towers, which themselves ascend to a majestic height of 254 meters, this bridge is part of the Great Belt Fixed Link, a multi-structure project that also includes a box girder bridge and a tunnel, collectively spanning a comprehensive length of 18 kilometers. Constructed at a cost of over $4 billion, it was an investment that streamlined travel drastically, cutting down transportation time between Copenhagen and Odense by more than an hour. The East Bridge carries more than 27,000 vehicles each day, effectively doubling the potential for inter-island commerce and connectivity. 
Its construction required 19 concrete piers, the largest of which weighs approximately 530,000 tons. Traveling across the globe, it's time to investigate an immense underground project in South Korea. Yulhyeon Tunnel, which is the deepest and longest double-track subway tunnel in the world, was completed in 2020 after extensive construction that began in 2011. The tunnel stretches a remarkable 50.3 kilometers, connecting the city of Yuwang with the town of Yulhyeon, and runs as deep as 50 meters underground at some points. The construction of the Yulhyeon Tunnel was a significant undertaking, costing approximately $1.2 billion. The tunnel's role in South Korea's transit infrastructure is pivotal. It facilitates the operation of trains traveling at speeds up to 110 km per hour, which is expected to slash journey times between key South Korean cities by more than an hour. The tunnel's design and construction employed advanced tunnel boring machines and new Austrian tunneling methods, which are considered state-of-the-art in the field of tunnel construction. However, the construction of the Yulhyeon Tunnel was not without its challenges. The project faced significant engineering hurdles, including managing the immense water inflow and stabilizing the tunnel walls and sections with loose earth. In addition to technical challenges, the project also encountered regulatory hurdles. There were concerns about potential impacts on local ecosystems and water tables, which led to rigorous environmental assessments and the implementation of several mitigation measures to protect the surrounding environment. Moving over back to the United States, it's time to investigate the Southern Underground Mine State Park. Nestled in the Vermilion Range of Minnesota, this project harbors the state's oldest and deepest iron ore mine, which commenced operations in 1882 and continued until 1962. This site has transitioned from a high-grade ore production facility to a hub for scientific research and public education. The mine's deepest sections extend nearly half a mile underground, setting it apart as one of the most substantial vertical shaft mines in the United States. During its 80 years of operation, the Southern mine produced over 15.5 million tons of ore, a staggering amount that contributed significantly to the region's economic development. This production level was critical for the United States steel industry, particularly during both world wars. Transforming the site into Southern Underground Mine State Park involved significant effort, with the state of Minnesota investing heavily to preserve this historical landmark. The transition included extensive renovations to stabilize old mine workings and adapt the underground tunnels for safe public tours and scientific research, specifically in physics. The park now hosts a state-of-the-art physics laboratory, which was established to study particle physics, including investigations into the elusive dark matter. This lab, located in the mine's lower levels, utilizes the Earth's natural shielding against cosmic rays to operate highly sensitive detectors, such as the MINOS experiment, which tracks neutrinos from the Fermilab in Illinois over a distance of 450 miles. The One, a skyscraper set to redefine Toronto's skyline, is scheduled for completion in 2024. Located at the intersection of Yonge and Bohr, this structure is designed to be Canada's tallest building at a height of 308 meters. Spanning 85 floors, the one features a mixed-use design that combines luxury residential units, high-end retail spaces, and boutique offices. The total floor space of the one covers approximately 416,000 square meters, an area large enough to fit nine Canadian football fields. This ambitious project is being developed at a cost of over $1 billion, a financial commitment comparable to that of the Shard in London. The one employs over 1,600 construction workers and specialists who are utilizing over 45,000 cubic meters of concrete and 6,500 tons of steel. Mizrahi Developments, the firm behind the one, has collaborated with world-renowned architects Foster Plus Partners to create a unique structural identity through a pioneering exoskeleton design. Both a functional and aesthetic element that eliminates the need for interior columns and opens up expansive, uninterrupted interior spaces. The retail levels at the one are elevated above the street, creating a two-story podium that integrates with the public realm. The one features 416 residential units, with each floor providing panoramic views of Lake Ontario and the city skyline. 
The building's top floors are reserved for penthouse suites, which include terraces that provide some of the highest private outdoor spaces in the city. The Seine Shelt Project, designed to enhance the navigability and capacity of the waterway network between the Seine River in France and the Shelt River in Belgium. With an ambitious budget exceeding 4.5 billion euros, this vast project is a testament to European cooperation in improving infrastructure and boosting economic growth. Currently under construction and completed by 2027, the Seine Shelt project encompasses the upgrading of approximately 1,100 kilometers of waterways to accommodate larger vessels up to 4,400 tons, aiming to shift the transportation paradigm from road to water, thereby reducing congestion and environmental impact. This includes the construction and enhancement of numerous locks, bridges, and canal sections, with a critical component being the new 107-kilometer canal link designed to bypass existing bottlenecks. But that's not the only impressive travel megaproject France is working on, because they also have the Lyron Turin high-speed rail. This project is a groundbreaking endeavor set to revolutionize transportation between France and Italy, signifying a major leap in European rail infrastructure. With a budget estimated at over 26 billion euros, the project's centerpiece is the Mont Cenis base tunnel, stretching 57.5 kilometers, poised to become one of the world's longest rail tunnels. This tunnel will significantly reduce the Lyon to Turin travel time aiming to shift a substantial portion of freight and passenger traffic from road to rail, thereby decreasing carbon emissions and traffic congestion. Scheduled for completion in 2030, the Lyon Turin high-speed rail will extend approximately 270 kilometers, incorporating state-of-the-art technology and engineering. Upon completion, the rail line is expected to accommodate speeds of up to 220 kilometers per hour, slashing the Lyon Turin journey to just under two hours. We travel to Saudi Arabia to inspect the Sindala Island project. Spanning approximately 840 hectares, Sindala will be an elite destination combining luxurious living with cutting-edge infrastructure. To put its size into perspective, it's roughly twice the size of Central Park in New York City. This extensive area is designed to accommodate around 2,500 luxurious hotel rooms, more than 800 residential properties, and a plethora of amenities including marinas, sports clubs, and retail establishments. Planned to be completed in 2024, the use of solar energy and cutting-edge water desalination plants are poised to set benchmarks in sustainable resort development. Furthermore, the architecture is designed to blend seamlessly with the natural environment, minimizing ecological footprint and enhancing the aesthetic value of the construction. Economically, Sindela is expected to create thousands of jobs, both during and after construction. The development is anticipated to contribute significantly to the kingdom's GDP, aligning with Saudi Vision 2030 Seconds goals of economic diversification and technological advancement. Sindela's marina is designed to rival the likes of Monte Carlo, featuring berths for over 400 yachts. Let's move to Denmark for the new Storstrom Bridge, set to redefine the landscape of Scandinavian infrastructure. With a budget exceeding 700 million euros, this project represents a monumental investment in the country's transportation network, promising to streamline connectivity across the region. Currently under construction, the bridge spans a length of four kilometers, making it one of the longest in Scandinavia. Designed to cater to both rail and road traffic, the bridge features a dual-track railway capable of supporting speeds up to 200 kilometers per hour for trains, alongside a two-lane road for vehicular traffic, including a pathway for pedestrians and cyclists, ensuring comprehensive accessibility and mobility. Scheduled for completion in 2024, this project is eagerly awaited by both local communities and international observers. Upon its inauguration, the new Storstrom Bridge will stand as a symbol of Danish innovation and a pivotal link in Scandinavia's transportation network. Dongtan Eco City on Chongming Island in Shanghai, China, was once hailed as a pioneering venture. Planned as the world's first eco-city, Daunton was ambitiously projected to house up to 500,000 people by 2050, creating a green and self-sustaining urban environment. Launched with grand aspirations in 2005, the project promised to set a global benchmark for sustainable living. 
However, it gradually fizzled into obscurity, becoming an exemplary case of a green megaproject that never materialized. Daunton was designed to be built on a 8,600 hectare site on Chandaming Island, near the Yangtze River estuary. The plan was to minimize carbon output, maximize the use of renewable resources, and create a car-free urban environment. Energy was to be generated by wind and solar, food would be grown locally, and a ban on cars would be enforced to maintain air quality. The city was designed to be completed in phases, with the first phase ready by 2010, coinciding with the Shanghai World Expo. From its inception, Daunton faced significant bureaucratic and operational challenges. The overlapping authority between different governmental levels led to inconsistent support and eventual stagnation of the initiative. The Eco-City's ambitious scope required seamless coordination between numerous governmental and private stakeholders, but that coordination was severely lacking. Moreover, allegations of corruption involving key project leaders further tainted the venture. The arrest of Shanghai's party secretary on unrelated corruption charges in 2006 sent ripples through the political landscape that paralyzed progress. As the years passed, the initial groundwork that had begun on Daunton stalled indefinitely. By 2010, the site remained largely agricultural land, with only sporadic developments hinting at the grand urban plans once envisioned. Despite China's rapid urbanization, which sees millions of rural residents moving to cities, Daunton would have been one of the few urban projects globally to integrate ecological principles from the ground up, rather than as an afterthought. Crossing the globe, we travel to the United Kingdom for the tallest building in the country. The Shard rises majestically to a height of 310 meters, making it the tallest building in the country and the fourth tallest in Europe. Its 95 stories are encased in 11,000 glass panels, covering a total surface area of 56,000 square meters, which is enough to cover eight football pitches. This neo-futuristic skyscraper, completed in 2012, was designed by the renowned Italian architect Renzo Piano, who envisioned it as a vertical city. The Shard houses offices, luxury residences, a five-star hotel, and multiple top-tier restaurants, all offering panoramic views of London. The construction of the Shard was a monumental task, utilizing 243,000 cubic meters of concrete and 36,000 tons of steel. This structural marvel can accommodate up to 85 people at any one time, roughly equivalent to the population of a small town. Visitors can ascend to the observation deck, located on the 72nd floor, which offers an unrivaled 360-degree view of the city, stretching up to 64 kilometers on a clear day. The Shard's dynamic facade reflects the changing skies, seamlessly integrating the building into the fabric of London while minimizing heat absorption through its energy-efficient glass. Staying in Europe, we travel to Paris for the world-famous Eiffel Tower megaproject. When completed in 1889 for the Exposition Universelle, it was the tallest man-made structure in the world, standing at 324 meters high. Constructed from 7,300 metric tons of iron, the Eiffel Tower comprises 18,038 individual metal parts, joined together by 2.5 million rivets. This engineering marvel was designed by Gustave Eiffel, whose firm specialized in constructing bridges. Remarkably, the Eiffel Tower was intended to be dismantled in 1909, but was spared due to its utility as a radio telegraph station. Today, it attracts more than 7 million visitors annually, making it the most visited paid monument in the world. The tower's three levels are accessible to visitors, with restaurants on the first and second levels and the highest observation deck accessible at 276 meters. Each of the Eiffel Tower's four pillars rests on slabs of limestone with foundations sinking down to depths of about 7 to 15 meters, an architectural necessity that supports the massive iron lattice structure. The Eiffel Tower's iconic silhouette has inspired numerous replicas worldwide but none matched the original's architectural elegance and historical significance. Traveling to the opposite side of the earth, we pay a visit to New Zealand. Standing at a commanding height of 328 meters, the Sky Tower in Auckland is not only the tallest freestanding structure in the Southern Hemisphere, but also an engineering and telecommunications beacon. Its height surpasses the Shard in London, underscoring its prominence on the global stage. Constructed using 2,000 tons of steel and 15,000 cubic meters of concrete, 
The Sky Tower serves as a critical link in New Zealand's telecommunications network, featuring 21 transmission antennas. The Sky Tower can withstand wind speeds of up to 200 kilometers per hour and earthquakes with a magnitude of up to 8.0 on the Richter scale, owing to its deeply secured foundation which penetrates 15 meters into the earth. The Sky Tower's lighting, which uses energy-efficient LED bulbs, often changes color to support charitable causes, intertwining functionality with community engagement. Next up is another underground Chinese megaproject called the Jinping Laboratory. This laboratory is the deepest underground lab in the world, located approximately 2,400 meters beneath the surface in the Jinping Mountain. This staggering depth surpasses that of other well-known underground facilities like the Sanford Underground Research Facility in the United States. Established in 2010, the Jinping Lab is designed for the detection of dark matter particles and other low background experiments that require protection from cosmic radiation. The depth provides an overburden of 6,700 meters water equivalent, the highest of any laboratory in the world. Spanning an area of 2,000 square meters, the laboratory's construction involved excavating approximately 80,000 cubic meters of rock, a volume that underscores the massive scale of this project compared to smaller scientific setups such as the Gran Sasso in Italy. One of the unique challenges faced during the construction of Jinping was managing the high water pressure prevalent at such depths, which necessitated the development of specialized waterproofing and pressure management systems. The Jinping Underground Laboratory is also a site of international collaboration, drawing scientists from across the globe to its deep earth cavern. Moreover, the laboratory's remote location and depth make it a logistical challenge, requiring the transportation of equipment and personnel through a single tunnel that connects the lab to the outside world. Let's travel to South Africa for the world's deepest mine. Emponeng Gold Mine in South Africa reaches an astonishing 4 kilometers, or 2.5 miles into the Earth's crust. This operational depth exceeds that of any other mining venture globally, including the Tautona Mine, which extends 3.9 kilometers underground. Emponeng, which means look at me in the local Sotho language, began its operations in 1986 under Anglo Gold Ashanti and has since become a symbol of extreme engineering challenges. The mines, shafts, and tunnels cover an area so extensive that it descends below sea level at points, creating a unique set of geological conditions. To maintain operations at such depths, the mine circulates ice slurry to cool the ambient temperature, which can reach up to 55 degrees Celsius due to geothermal heat from the surrounding rock. Producing over 244,000 ounces of gold annually, Emponeng's output is significant compared to smaller gold mining operations, such as the Porcupine Mine in Canada. The high-grade gold ore body at Emponeng is accessed through a complex network of tunnels and shafts, requiring highly sophisticated drilling and blasting techniques that utilize automated loaders and dump trucks for ore extraction and transportation. Emponeng's vast network of underground development is supported by a workforce of around 5,600 people, each of whom must descend a vertical distance greater than the height of Mount Everest to reach the working faces. The operational complexities of Emponeng extend beyond simple excavation. The mine deals with rock bursts and seismic activity due to the immense pressures at depth. These geological stresses are managed through meticulous seismic monitoring and advanced rock bolting techniques. Financially, the development and continuous modernization of Emponeng have seen billions of rand invested over the decades, including substantial sums spent on refining the gold extraction and processing facilities. Let's take a look at the Texas Central Railway, which is an ambitious high-speed rail project poised to revolutionize transportation between Dallas and Houston. With plans to cover the approximately 240 miles between them in just about 90 minutes, this rail line is a beacon of modern transit technology and efficiency. Inspired by the Shinkansen high-speed rail system in Japan, it is estimated to cost around $20 billion, reflecting its scale and the advanced technology it intends to deploy. As of the latest updates, the anticipated completion date for the Texas Central Railway hovers around the late 2022s, although specific timelines have been subject to adjustments. This groundbreaking project promises to carry more than 13 million passengers annually upon reaching full operational capacity. 
Let's now travel to Dubai for an expansion project that will change their international airport forever. The Al Maktoum International Airport, also known as Dubai World Central, is set to undergo an expansion that redefines its status as a global aviation hub. Upon completion, it's poised to become the world's largest airport, with the capacity to handle over 220 million passengers annually. This expansion is a centerpiece of Dubai's ambitious vision to cater to the growing international travel and cargo demand, reflecting the city's strategic role in global commerce and tourism. Projected to cost upwards of $32 billion, the expansion aims to equip Dubai World Central with five runways, multiple concourses, and state-of-the-art facilities that stretch over a sprawling 56 square kilometers. This colossal development is designed not only to accommodate the exponential growth of Emirates, the city's flagship carrier, but also to enhance Dubai's connectivity with the global economy. The phased expansion plan was initially set to be completed by the mid-2020 seconds, but updates to the timeline suggest a completion date might extend to better align with future growth projections and travel trends. It's now time to check out the Petronas Twin Towers in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Reaching a staggering height of 452 meters, this project is the tallest twin structure in the world and surpasses the Willis Tower in Chicago by 10 meters. These architectural marvels held the title of the tallest buildings in the world from 1998 to 2004 until surpassed by Taipei 101. Constructed using 33,000 tons of steel and 160,000 cubic meters of concrete, each tower is supported by a 120 meter deep foundation, which is among the deepest for any building. The design, a brainchild of Argentine-American architect Cesar Pelli, was inspired by traditional Islamic art reflecting Malaysia's cultural heritage, with a floor plan based on an eight-pointed star. The towers are linked by a double-decker skybridge at the 41st and 42nd floors, which is the highest two-story bridge in the world. Featuring 88 floors of office space, the towers house the headquarters of Petronas, Malaysia's National Petroleum Corporation, as well as other corporations. The construction of the Petronas Twin Towers employed a cutting-edge curtain wall system that is designed to reduce heat and enable energy-efficient cooling. But the towers can get much taller than that. Next up is Landmark 81, soaring majestically over Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. It reaches a towering height of 461 meters, making it the tallest building in Vietnam and among the top 20 tallest worldwide. The building consists of 81 floors and covers a floor area of 241,000 square meters, used for a mix of residential, retail, and leisure facilities, making it a multifunctional vertical city. Its design is inspired by the bamboo stalk a symbol of traditional Vietnamese resilience and elegance. Landmark 81 boasts a luxury hotel, high-end apartments, and Vietnam's highest observatory deck, offering panoramic views of the city and the Saigon River. The development was completed in 2018 by the Vingroup conglomerate, with a design by the renowned architectural firm Atkins. The tower is part of a larger $1.5 billion Vinhomes Central Park development project, which aims to transform the city's skyline and elevate its international profile. Strategically positioned along the banks of the Saigon River, Landmark 81 is not only a commercial and residential hub, but also a beacon for eco-friendly practices, featuring vertical gardens and sustainable architecture elements. Opened in 2007, it spans an impressive 18 kilometers, or 11 miles, making it one of the longest mountain tunnels globally. This dual-tube tunnel cuts through the heart of Zhongnan Mountain, reducing the travel time between Xi'an and Anqing from 4 hours to just under 2 hours. Excavating at depths of up to 1,640 feet beneath the mountain peaks, the tunnel presented unique geological challenges. The construction teams encountered a range of difficult conditions from soft rocks and high groundwater inflow to hazardous gas emissions, each requiring bespoke solutions. The project's cost was estimated at approximately $470 million. One of the unique aspects of the John Nanshan Tunnel is its ventilation system. Given the tunnel's length and depth, maintaining air quality was paramount. The system is a pioneering effort in China for long tunnels, involving large ventilation towers that extract air from the center of the tunnel, ensuring the safety and comfort of motorists. 
This contrasts sharply with many older tunnels where simpler and less effective ventilation systems were implemented. Construction of the tunnel also set benchmarks in environmental conservation. The project included comprehensive measures to prevent damage to the local ecosystem, including relocating certain plant species and creating artificial waterways to redirect water flows altered by construction. In the tunnel's early years, it experienced problems with water leakage and ice formation in winter, posing risks to traffic safety. These problems were addressed through the retrofitting of the drainage system and the installation of an ice warning and response system, which have been critical in minimizing accidents and maintaining clear passage during the winter months. It's time to travel to the United Arab Emirates for the next project. Set to open its doors in 2024, the Zayd National Museum will be dedicated to the late Sheikh Zayd bin Sultan Al Nayyan, spanning across 12,000 square meters, roughly equivalent to two football fields. The museum's design, a masterpiece by the renowned architect Lord Norman Foster, features a cluster of five solar thermal towers soaring 125 meters high. These towers are not only architectural marvels, but also functional, acting as thermal chimneys to naturally draw cooling currents throughout the building. Zaid National Museum will host nine permanent galleries, each narrating a part of the country's history. This space will also accommodate a temporary gallery space equal in size to an Olympic swimming pool, designed to host international exhibitions and large-scale installations. The building is poised to become a centerpiece in Saudiat Cultural District, which also includes the Louvre Abu Dhabi and the upcoming Guggenheim Abu Dhabi. The construction utilizes materials that reflect the region's geology. The exterior is clad in limestone, much like the natural rock formations found in the Arabian deserts. Projected to attract around 300,000 visitors annually, the museum aims to double this number following the establishment phase. The tallest clock tower in the world. Perched next to the Grand Mosque of Mecca, the Abraj al Bayt clock tower isn't just a skyscraper, it's a colossal marvel towering at 601 meters, making it one of the tallest and most striking man-made structures on Earth. Its clock face, the largest in the world, spans 43 meters in diameter, easily outclassing London's Big Ben by five times. Built at a staggering cost of $15 billion, this megastructure is part of a seven-tower complex that redefines luxury in scale. Above, a 93-meter tall spire topped with a 23-meter golden crescent makes it a beacon visible from miles across the city, guiding pilgrims like a lighthouse of faith. With the world's largest floor area, the tower hosts an Islamic museum and a moon observation center which provides astronomers and scholars a unique vantage point for sighting the moon, crucial for the Islamic calendar. It's time to travel to the United States for the tallest mast on planet Earth. The KVLYTV mast, towering at 629 meters, stands as the tallest structure in the Western Hemisphere and the tallest guide mast in the world. Erected in 1963 near Blanchard, North Dakota, this engineering feat surpasses the height of other monumental structures like Tokyo Skytree and Shanghai Tower when considering guide masts alone. Engineered to enhance broadcast range, the mast extends television coverage across the eastern North Dakota and northwestern Minnesota plains. It utilizes approximately 30 kilometers of guy wires, which are anchored in three directions to stabilize the structure against the formidable winds typical of the Great Plains. Constructed with high-strength steel, the mast weighs around 9,000 pounds at its pinnacle, despite its towering presence. The mast's foundation is embedded deeply into the earth, ensuring structural integrity and resistance to torsional forces caused by harsh weather. Visibility of the mast from great distances requires aviation safety measures, including numerous red warning lights along its length, to alert aircraft. It's time to visit Tokyo next for the Tokyo Skytree. Towering at 634 meters, it was completed in 2012 to serve as a primary television and radio broadcast site for the Kanto region, ensuring clearer transmission as high-rise buildings proliferated. Constructed with about 36,000 tons of steel, Tokyo Skytree features a unique seismic proofing design with a central concrete column independently secured from the surrounding steel frame. A method inspired by ancient pagodas which allows the structure to withstand earthquakes with minimal sway. 
The tower's color, officially called Skytree White, is based on a traditional Japanese indigo blue hue, blending modern design with traditional aesthetic considerations. The lighting of the Skytree alternates between the icky sky blue and Miyabi purple, inspired by the patterns of Japanese folding fans, which illuminate the tower beautifully at night. Tokyo Skytree has two observation decks at heights of 350 meters and 450 meters, offering panoramic views of Tokyo and, on clear days, Mount Fuji. The base of the Skytree is a bustling commercial hub named Tokyo Salamachi, which includes over 300 shops and restaurants. But the absolutely tallest structure on planet Earth is of course the Burj Khalifa, located in Dubai. Completed in 2010 at a height of 828 meters, the superstructure took more than 22 million man-hours to build. The tower features 163 floors above ground, including corporate suites, residences, and the Armani Hotel. It also boasts the highest observation deck in the world, located on the 148th floor at 555 meters hosting the world's second highest swimming pool on the 76th floor and the world's highest restaurant on the 122nd floor. The Burj Khalifa is not only a feat of engineering, but also a luxury destination for global tourists. The project is also pivotal for technological innovations such as the telescopic spire comprising more than 4,000 tons of structural steel. Given its height, the Burj Khalifa is designed to withstand Dubai's hot summer temperatures with its reflective glazing, and the exterior temperature at its top is significantly cooler than at its base. Let's check out a railway project utilizing technology never used in the country before. The Northeast Maglev project is set to redefine high-speed travel along the Northeast Corridor, proposing to use state-of-the-art superconducting magnetic levitation technology to connect Washington, D.C and New York City. This cutting-edge transportation solution aims to slash the current travel time from approximately three hours to just one hour between these two pivotal cities, covering a distance of about 225 miles. Estimated to cost upwards of $100 billion, the Northeast Maglev represents a monumental investment in future mobility, promising speeds of up to 311 miles per hour. The project is in the preliminary stages, with significant steps such as environmental impact assessments and securing funding currently underway. Early projections suggest that, if all goes according to plan, the first phase, connecting Washington, D.C., to Baltimore, could be operational by the late 2022s, marking the beginning of a new era in American transportation. Let's travel across the world to Thailand, where one of the largest airports in the region is being constructed. Utapao Aviation City, a cornerstone of Thailand's eastern economic corridor, represents a visionary leap towards establishing a leading aerospace hub in Southeast Asia. This extensive project, centered around the existing Utapao International Airport, spans over 30 square kilometers and aims to merge aviation activities with commercial, industrial, and logistic developments, creating a fully integrated aerospace ecosystem. With a projected investment of approximately $9 billion, Utapao Aviation City is designed to elevate Thailand's aviation industry to global standards, incorporating a new passenger terminal to handle up to 60 million passengers annually. The development is phased, with the first stage aiming for completion by 2024. However, the full vision of Utapao Aviation City, including its advanced industrial and commercial components, is expected to materialize by 2030. It's time to visit the construction of the longest sea bridge in India. The Mumbai Trans Harbour Link is an engineering marvel set to redefine connectivity between Mumbai and Navi Mumbai. Spanning 22 kilometers, this mega project includes a 16.5 kilometer sea bridge and 5.5 kilometers of viaducts on land, designed to facilitate the seamless flow of traffic across Mumbai's eastern seaboard. With an investment of approximately $2.4 billion, the bridge is not just a feat of engineering but also an initiative to boost economic growth. The link features six lanes, capable of handling up to 70,000 vehicles per day, and includes provisions for future public transport upgrades. Initially expected to be completed by 2022, delays have pushed the anticipated completion date to 2024. Staying in Asia, let's transition over to another state-of-the-art high-speed rail project. 
the Kuala Lumpur Singapore High Speed Rail. It's set to revolutionize travel between Malaysia and Singapore, two of Southeast Asia's most dynamic economies. Spanning approximately 350 kilometers, this high-speed rail link aims to cut travel time between the two cities from over four hours by car to just 90 minutes by train, offering an efficient, sustainable alternative to air and road travel. With an estimated cost of $15 billion, the rail project is expected to greatly enhance economic ties, promote tourism, and facilitate greater cross-border mobility for the approximately 33 million people who travel between Malaysia and Singapore annually. The project includes plans for seven stations, each designed to be a catalyst for urban and economic development within its locale. Originally slated for completion by 2026, the project has experienced delays and was temporarily suspended to allow both governments to review and revise its terms. As of the latest updates, the project is expected to resume, with a new completion date yet to be determined. The Wielix Gasalt mine in Poland is an astonishing subterranean network that stretches to depths of up to 327 meters, or 1,073 feet below the surface, covering an expansive area of 2.4 million square meters. Operational for over 700 years since its inception in the 13th century, the mine is one of the world's oldest continuously running salt mines. Only ceasing commercial salt production in 2007 due to flooding and the low price of salt on the global market. This historic mine features a labyrinth of tunnels, chambers, and galleries that extend over 178 miles, though only a small portion is accessible to the public. By comparison, the equally historic but much shallower Kura salt mine in Pakistan extends just 25 miles of passages. One of the mine's most unique attributes is its underground city, which includes chapels, a cathedral, and numerous sculptures all carved from rock salt by the miners. Financially, the development of Wielix Gasalt mine over the centuries has involved significant investment, particularly in its conversion into a major tourism and health resort. The site now attracts approximately 1.2 million visitors annually, generating substantial revenue that supports its preservation and the local economy. Throughout its long history, Wielixka has faced numerous challenges including the threat of mine flooding, which on several occasions risked catastrophic collapses. These were mitigated through modern engineering efforts that included the installation of high-volume pumps and new drainage systems, ensuring the mine's stability and the safety of its visitors. Besides that, the preservation of this UNESCO World Heritage Site involves complex conservation practices. The saline environment, which is beneficial for health, poses a constant threat to the mine's structural integrity, accelerating the deterioration of wooden structures and necessitating continuous maintenance efforts. It's time to talk about a Malaysian travel megaproject next, called the Klang Valley MRT, a transformative public transport initiative designed to dramatically improve urban mobility in and around Kuala Lumpur. The SBK line, already operational since July 2017, spans 51 kilometers and features 31 stations, seamlessly connecting key urban and suburban areas. The SSP line, extending over 52.2 kilometers with 37 stations, is poised to further enhance the network's coverage upon its completion. As of recently, the SSP line is targeted for full operation by 2024, promising a significant reduction in travel times and congestion in one of Southeast Asia's most dynamic metropolitan areas. With an estimated investment surpassing $7 billion for the first two lines alone, the Klang Valley MRT project stands as one of Malaysia's largest infrastructure undertakings. It underscores the nation's commitment to sustainable urban development aiming to serve over 2 million passengers daily upon the completion of all phases. We have to talk about the 4 Frankfurt project. This impressive development encompasses four towers, each designed to redefine urban living and working in Europe's financial hub. These four skyscrapers vary in height, with the tallest reaching 233 meters, making it one of the highest buildings in Germany, surpassed only by the Commerzbank Tower. Together, the towers boast a total floor area of approximately 218,000 square meters, equivalent to about 30 soccer fields laid flat. 
The construction budget for 4 Frankfurt is estimated at 1.3 billion euros. Around 5,000 construction workers are involved in bringing this project to fruition, utilizing approximately 50,000 cubic meters of concrete and 10,000 tons of steel, the latter amount enough to build seven Eiffel Towers. Each tower's facade is designed with sustainability in mind featuring high-efficiency glass that maximizes natural light while minimizing heat gain. This aspect is crucial, considering the complex aims to achieve LEED Platinum certification. The residential units are expected to house about 1,000 people, providing them with amenities such as a panoramic gym, rooftop gardens, and direct access to a newly landscaped public plaza nearly twice the size of the Place de la Concorde in Paris. In comparison to other global megaprojects like Hudson Yards in New York City, 4 Frankfurt is unique in its approach to vertical living spaces and integration with public amenities. 4 Frankfurt's integration of office spaces in residential areas within the same complex is a model of modern urban development. The retail spaces within 4 Frankfurt cover 8,000 square meters, including high-end shops and culinary offerings that cater to both the residents and the broader public. Next up, it's time to visit China for the next mega project. The Philharmonic Concert Hall, set to open its doors in 2024, is an architectural symphony in Beijing, designed by the renowned MAD architects. Spanning over 26,000 square meters, this state-of-the-art venue is poised to become one of the premier cultural landmarks in China. Constructed at a projected cost of $300 million, the hall demonstrates a significant investment in cultural infrastructure comparable to the Walt Disney Concert Hall in Los Angeles. The design features a vineyard-style auditorium with a seating capacity of 1,600 people, which allows every audience member to be no more than 30 meters from the conductor. Approximately 15,000 square meters of this unique material have been used, creating a visual effect similar to that of Beijing's iconic water cube from the 2008 Olympics. The project employs more than 3,000 workers and specialists, utilizing innovative construction techniques that include the use of robotic arms for precision tasks. This level of technological engagement in its construction is rarely seen in cultural buildings and is more akin to the high-tech manufacturing processes used in skyscraper construction. Inside, the main concert hall is surrounded by rehearsal and recording studios, each designed with specialized soundproofing materials that cover a combined area of 2,000 square meters. The venue is also equipped with advanced digital streaming technologies that allow performances to be broadcasted worldwide, reaching audiences that are multiple times the hall's physical capacity. We have to travel back to France for a gigantic restoration megaproject. The restoration of Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris follows the devastating fire of April 2019, which led to the collapse of the cathedral's spire and significant damage to its roof. Spanning over 130 meters in length, Notre Dame is approximately the length of an Olympic swimming pool, emphasizing the monumental scale of the restoration work involved. The height of the spire, once rebuilt, will reach 93 meters. This restoration is expected to cost upwards of 850 million euros, sourced from global donations reflecting the world's shared interest in preserving this cultural monument. Over 1,000 craftsmen, artisans, and engineers are involved in the restoration, utilizing traditional techniques and materials consistent with the original construction. For instance, limestone from the historical quarries of St. Maximin is being used to match the texture and color of the original facade. The wood for reconstructing the forest, an intricate lattice of timbers that supported the roof, is being sourced from centuries-old oaks, just as it was in the 12th century. The complexity of the project includes the integration of modern safety and conservation technologies that were not present at the time of the original construction. Advanced 3D imaging and robotic technology are being employed to meticulously map and recreate architectural details that were lost or damaged. The roof's area, covering approximately 5,000 square meters, is being carefully reconstructed to mirror the original in appearance while integrating modern fire-resistant materials. This ensures that while the cathedral retains its historical aesthetic, it will not be susceptible to the same level of risk as before. 
The cathedral's famed organ consisting of 8,000 pipes is also undergoing an extensive cleaning and restoration process. Each pipe is being individually assessed and restored, a painstaking task that underscores the attention to detail central to this project. The expected completion in 2024 is set to coincide with the Paris Olympic Games, symbolizing a rebirth of both the cathedral and Parisian spirit. Let's travel to Canada to investigate Mirabel International Airport. Envisioned in the 1960s during the Jet Age's euphoria, Mirabel was intended to replace Montreal Trudeau Airport, accommodating an expected surge in international travel. It officially opened in 1975, boasting one of the world's largest airport zones at over 70 square kilometers larger than the island of Montreal itself. However, it soon became evident that this ambitious project was mired in misjudgments and inefficiencies. Mirabel was constructed with the capacity to handle 50 million passengers per year, a number that starkly contrasted with its peak usage of only 2.8 million passengers in 1979. The airport's downfall was precipitated by several critical flaws. Firstly, its location was impractical. Situated 39 kilometers northwest of Montreal, it was too remote for most travelers, lacking direct highway or rail links to the city center at its inception. Secondly, Mirabel's focus shifted exclusively to cargo and charter flights by 1997, significantly diminishing its role. Its vast passenger facilities echoed with emptiness, leading to its complete shutdown of passenger operations in 2004. Have you ever seen a ghost terminal? Mirabel's passenger terminal, once buzzing with travelers, transformed into a ghostly expanse of unused gates and vacant corridors. Efforts to revive or repurpose Mirabel were consistently stymied by its original design and location flaws. Although the cargo sector continued to operate, the vast majority of the infrastructure lay dormant, leading to the demolition of the passenger terminal in 2016. Despite its failure as a passenger hub, Mirabel found a niche in aircraft manufacturing. It is home to Bombardier Aerospace, which utilizes the expansive property for assembling various aircraft models. Moving away from Canada, let's check out the abandoned Sheffield Ski Village, located in the United Kingdom. Opening in 1988, this facility was one of the largest artificial ski resorts in Europe, offering skiing, snowboarding, and tobogganing across its expansive site that included a main slope, a nursery slope, and freestyle areas. In its heyday, Sheffield Ski Village drew crowds from across the country, nurturing a generation of winter sports enthusiasts, and even producing Olympians like James Woods. At its peak, Sheffield Ski Village boasted over 30,000 visitors a year, and was integral in promoting winter sports among the British youth. However, the facility's fortune began to decline in the 2000s. The reasons for the ski village's downfall are multifaceted. Primarily, it suffered from chronic underinvestment. While the allure of artificial slopes in a country known for mild winters was clear, the financial backing did not keep pace with the facility's maintenance needs. The equipment and infrastructure aged, lessening the site's appeal compared to newer, more modern facilities. And on top of that, disaster struck in 2012 when a massive fire ravaged the ski village, destroying the main building and several slopes. Despite initial promises to rebuild, subsequent smaller fires and continued vandalism completely devastated the remaining structures, making any potential recovery efforts economically unfeasible. Today, the site of Sheffield Ski Village is a desolate landscape, frequented more by urban explorers and graffiti artists than by sports enthusiasts. Let's travel to Russia next to inspect the Austin Kino Tower, located in Moscow. Completed in 1967 during the Soviet era at a height of 540 meters, the Austin Kino Tower was designed primarily for telecommunications and to mark the 50th anniversary of the October Revolution. It holds the distinction of being the first structure outside the United States to exceed 500 meters in height. The tower's construction incorporates over 55,000 cubic meters of concrete and 3,000 tons of steel, a testament to Soviet engineering prowess. Austin Kino's antenna allows for broadcasting television and radio signals across a thousand kilometer radius, covering an immense swath of Russia's populace. It is equipped with multiple observation decks and a revolving restaurant, offering panoramic views of Moscow, making it a significant cultural and tourist attraction. 
The tower's fire in 2000 led to extensive renovations, including the installation of advanced fire safety systems, ensuring its resilience and safety for future generations. Austin Kino's unique lattice structure is not only functional but also iconic, designed to withstand severe Russian weather conditions and seismic activity. Next up, it's time to have a look at the world-famous One World Trade Center. Also known as the Freedom Tower, it stands as an indomitable pillar in the New York skyline at a patriotic height of 541 meters, including its spire. This makes it the tallest building in the Western Hemisphere, surpassing the Willis Tower in Chicago by 124 meters. Its 104 stories are encased in a shimmering facade of 2,000 pieces of prismatic glass, designed to reflect the sky and refract light, representing hope and endurance. One World Trade Center's design incorporates a reinforced concrete base, clad in blast-resistant materials, spanning 57 meters high, which is unprecedented in scale for such safety features. Above this base, office floors begin, featuring floor-to-ceiling windows that offer unobstructed views of Manhattan. The building's total floor area spans 3.5 million square feet, accommodating businesses, restaurants, and broadcast facilities. Its observation deck, located on the 100th to 102nd floors, provides visitors with breathtaking 360-degree views of New York City. Known locally as the Ghost Tower, this 49-story skyscraper was meant to be a luxurious residential complex offering panoramic views of the bustling city and the meandering Cao Freyer River. However, its skeletal frame now stands as a stark symbol of economic failure and architectural hubris. Safforn Unique Tower was over 80% complete when construction halted in 1997 due to the Asian financial crisis, which wreaked havoc on Thailand's economy. The crisis led to severe devaluation of the Thai bot, causing funding to dry up and leaving the tower in its now infamous abandoned state. The design of Safforn Unique promised luxury living in the heart of Bangkok's vibrant Safforn district, a prime location that was quickly developing into a financial hub. The building's construction began in the euphoric economic conditions of the mid-1990s, under the direction of prominent architect Rangsan Torsuin. At the time, the Thai economy was experiencing rapid growth, and the real estate market was booming with an insatiable appetite for high-end residential and commercial spaces. However, as the financial crisis took hold, real estate projects across Bangkok were left incomplete. The cost of completing the tower is now estimated to exceed the potential market value of the finished building, making financial recovery through completion a near-impossible endeavor. This economic impracticality cements its status as a permanent fixture of Bangkok's list of failed projects. Let's travel to the United States, where a useless water park megaproject is located. Walt Disney's River Country, the first water park at Walt Disney World in Florida, opened to great fanfare in 1976. Positioned on the shores of Bay Lake near the Magic Kingdom, it was themed as an old-fashioned swimming hole, complete with sandy bottoms, rustic wilderness, and all the charm expected from a Disney venture. Despite its initial popularity, River Country's story turned from a pioneering project to a deserted relic. The park was designed to give guests an experience akin to swimming in a lake, with water sourced directly from Bay Lake, filtered and treated before entering the pools. However, the idyllic concept faced unanticipated challenges that contributed to its decline. The water park model that River Country epitomized became outdated as more sophisticated, thrill-seeking water parks emerged. Newer parks offered more extensive, adrenaline-pumping attractions, unlike River Country's gentle slides and tame pools. A significant blow to its operation was the change in water safety perceptions and regulations. In the early 1980s, concerns about brain-eating amoebas found in natural bodies of warm freshwater like Bay Lake began to surface. Although no incidents were reported in River Country, the potential risk became a public relations challenge. This issue, coupled with the logistical difficulties of upgrading the old infrastructure, made compliance complex and costly. The park operated seasonally until it closed indefinitely in November 2001. In 2019, Disney officially announced that the area formerly occupied by River Country would be redeveloped into a new hotel resort. Staying in the United States, let's visit a massive railway project called the Desert Express High Speed Rail. 
Envisioned as a high-speed rail line between Las Vegas and Southern California, this rail link was meant to reduce travel times from an average of 4 hours to approximately 84 minutes. However, the Desert Express has struggled to move past the conceptual and early developmental stages. The project was first proposed in 2005 with plans to use state-of-the-art electric trains capable of speeds up to 150 miles per hour. From the outset, the Desert Express was touted for its potential to ease traffic congestion on the heavily traveled Interstate 15 freeway, a notorious bottleneck for tourists and truckers alike. The initial phase aimed to connect Las Vegas to Victorville, California, with further plans to extend the line to Palmdale and eventually tie into California's statewide high-speed rail network. The choice of Victorville as the southern terminus raised eyebrows from the beginning. Critics argued that Victorville, located approximately 85 miles northeast of downtown Los Angeles, was too remote to serve as an effective gateway to Southern California. Potential riders would still face a considerable drive to reach the train station, thereby diminishing the perceived convenience of high-speed rail travel. And to make matters even worse, funding the project proved to be a Herculean task too. The estimated cost for just the initial segment was about $5 billion, with the complete line to Palmdale projected at over $7 billion. While federal loans and private investments were considered, securing the necessary capital became an ongoing challenge, exacerbated by the economic fluctuations and political hesitations over government spending on infrastructure projects. Surveys indicated that the rail could attract up to 11 million passengers annually by offering a convenient alternative to the arduous drive. Despite this, the necessary momentum to finalize funding and commence construction has been elusive. As of now, the future of the Desert Express remains uncertain. It's time to travel to Sri Lanka next for a gigantic near-empty airport. Matala Rajapaksa International Airport in Sri Lanka, dubbed the world's emptiest airport, serves as a stark illustration of misplaced priorities. Opened in 2013, the airport was intended to stimulate economic growth, attract international tourists, and act as a backup to the Bandaranaik International Airport in Colombo. However, with its remote location in the Hambantota district, far from major tourist attractions or business centers, the airport has struggled to attract both airlines and passengers. It was built with a capacity to handle 1 million passengers per year, yet reports suggest it has seen days where not a single commercial flight landed or took off. The airport's inception is deeply tied to China's Belt and Road Initiative with Chinese loans and contractors playing a pivotal role in its construction. Costing over $200 million, the project aimed to turn Hambantota into a vibrant economic hub. Matala Rajapaksa's isolation from Sri Lanka's main urban and tourist areas severely hindered its operational viability. The airport is approximately 250 kilometers away from Colombo, a fact that deterred both international airlines and passengers, who preferred the more accessible Bandaranaik International Airport. Despite the optimistic projections, by 2018, the airport had become virtually deserted, with the few airlines that initially showed interest eventually discontinuing their services due to low passenger numbers. The airport has not been without its unique uses, though. At various points, its expansive runway and lack of traffic have seen it proposed for alternative uses, such as storing paddy and other grains, and even as a setting for car races and music videos. The Kola Super Deep Borehole, once the deepest hole ever drilled at more than 12 kilometers, or 7.5 miles beneath the Earth's surface, stands as a monument to human curiosity. Initiated in 1970 by Soviet scientists on the Kola Peninsula, the project's aim was to probe the geology of the Earth's crust and to decipher the mysteries lying beneath. However, despite its groundbreaking depth, the project serves as a peculiar example of a scientific endeavor that, while achieving a record, yielded few practical results and was eventually abandoned. The project reached its maximum depth of around 40,000 feet in 1989 making it the world's deepest hole, a record it still holds today. The extreme depth brought extreme temperatures, which rose much higher than expected, reaching over 180 degrees Celsius or 356 degrees Fahrenheit. These conditions made further drilling near impossible as the drill bits could not withstand the heat. By the early 1990s, following the dissolution of the Soviet Union, funding for the project dried up. 
The scientific outpost around the borehole was gradually abandoned, and the site fell into disrepair, with the borehole itself being sealed. Despite reaching deeper into the earth than any other drill attempt, the borehole penetrated just 0.2% of the way to the earth's center. But have you ever heard of the unfinished bridge megaproject that leads to nowhere? Officially known as the Gravina Island Bridge, it was intended to connect the small town of Ketchikan, Alaska, with its neighboring Gravina Island, home to just a few dozen residents and the local airport. The proposal for the Gravina Island Bridge emerged as part of a broader initiative to improve transportation infrastructures in rural Alaska. The bridge's planned span was nearly as long as the Golden Gate Bridge and taller than the Brooklyn Bridge, designed to replace the existing ferry service with direct access to the island. The project was slated to cost approximately $398 million, with a significant portion coming from federal earmarks. The bridge quickly drew national attention and ridicule when it was revealed that federal taxpayers were footing the bill for a bridge to an island with so few residents. Dubbed the bridge to nowhere by media and critics, it became a heated subject in debates over federal pork barrel spending. The controversy intensified in 2006 when it was used as a prime example in discussions about wasteful expenditures in government projects. Political pressure and public outcry eventually led to the reallocation of the bridge's federal funding to other state projects in 2007. Alaska's government chose not to pursue the bridge project further, given the scrutiny and the burgeoning costs associated with it. The already constructed approach ramps on Gravina Island now serve as a stark reminder of the aborted project, leading to nowhere and serving no practical purpose. Despite the cancellation of the bridge, the state of Alaska had already spent about $25 million on road upgrades on Gravina Island, which are barely used today. Let's go to the Louisiana Offshore Oil Port, which stands as the only port in the United States capable of offloading deep draft tankers. Situated approximately 18 miles off the coast of Louisiana, the port plays a pivotal role in the import and export of crude oil, handling about 10 to 15 percent of the country's domestic oil. Built in 1970, the construction of this engineering feat was both a logistical and financial endeavor, costing over $300 million at the time, an amount equivalent to over $1.4 billion today when adjusted for inflation. Did you know that one of the most significant challenges during the port's construction was the laying of its underwater pipeline? This pipeline stretches over 48 miles to the onshore storage facilities and was one of the longest and most expensive underwater pipeline projects at the time. Let's move on to an even more expensive megaproject in one of the biggest cities in the country, the Las Vegas Allegiant Stadium. Home to the NFL's Las Vegas Raiders and located right next to the famous strip, this colossal structure was developed with a staggering construction cost of approximately $1.9 billion. But what makes this stadium worth that high price tag? Beyond its 65,000 seat capacity, the stadium features a retractable field and a massive translucent roof, offering fans a comfortable and visually stunning environment regardless of the desert heat. The Allegiant Stadium's construction also included a substantial investment in technology, with over 100 luxury suites and more than 8,000 club seats. The next project on our list is the most expensive dam located in the United States. The Hoover Dam represents one of the most significant engineering achievements of the 20th century. With a total construction cost of over $2.7 billion, the dam's financial figures are as staggering as its physical dimensions. To construct the Hoover Dam, an estimated 5 million barrels of cement and 45 million pounds of reinforced steel were required. This was at a time when the procurement and transportation of such massive quantities of materials were incredibly challenging, contributing significantly to the overall cost. Moreover, the dam's construction provided employment for thousands of workers, offering a much-needed economic boost during a time of widespread unemployment. Did you know that the Hoover Dam also required the construction of Boulder City, a town built specifically to house the project's workers and their families? This added another layer of expense but was essential for providing a stable and healthy living environment for the workforce. But an even more expensive megaproject is the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, an engineering marvel that connects the boroughs of Staten Island and Brooklyn in New York City. 
At the time of its completion in 1964, this bridge was the longest suspension bridge in the world. This colossal structure not only redefined the New York skyline, but also represented a significant financial undertaking with a construction cost of approximately $3 billion. The bridge's construction necessitated not only a substantial upfront investment, but also a long-term financial strategy to ensure its sustainability. The bridge required thousands of workers and vast amounts of materials, including steel for the four, 260 feet long main span, which contributes significantly to the overall expense. But that's not even close to the most expensive project located in New York. Let's talk about the new Yankee Stadium, which opened its doors in 2009 in the Bronx. This modern cathedral of baseball came with a hefty price tag of approximately $3.3 billion, making it one of the most expensive sports venues ever built at the time. The stadium's design paid homage to the original 1923 Yankee Stadium, with its iconic facade and the replication of the original field dimensions. However, it introduced modern amenities and technology to enhance the fan experience. These included more than 50 luxury suites, high-definition video screens, and improved seating with greater legroom and sight lines. Did you know that the construction of the new Yankee Stadium required the demolition and redevelopment of Macomb's Dam Park? This aspect of the project added to its complexity and cost, as new recreational facilities had to be built to replace the parkland used for the stadium. The project's engineering efforts also addressed the challenge of building atop the New York City subway's elevated four train line, requiring careful planning to avoid disruptions. Let's travel to the state of Virginia for a bridge project that moves the price bar even higher. The Woodrow Wilson Bridge project connecting Alexandria, Virginia, with Oxon Hill, Maryland, over the Potomac River, was reimagined to address the burgeoning traffic demands of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. The project's total cost, exceeding $3.4 billion, highlights its scope and the complexity of its execution. The decision to make the project a drawbridge, the world's second largest of its kind, was driven by the necessity to accommodate large ship traffic along the Potomac River. Moreover, the project expanded the bridge from 6 to 12 lanes, incorporating express and local lanes to significantly alleviate congestion. The addition of pedestrian and bicycle paths also reflected a forward-thinking approach to multimodal transportation. But we haven't even started talking about the colossal airport project the United States has worked on. Let's fly over to Denver International Airport, which was completed in 1995 and was initially budgeted at $1.7 billion, but eventually soared to nearly $5 billion, reflecting the project's scale and the complexities encountered during its development. One of the most iconic features of the airport is its striking tent-like roof structure, designed to mimic the snow-capped Rocky Mountains and pay homage to Native American teepees. The construction of Denver International was fraught with challenges, leading to delays and cost overruns. One significant factor was the airport's advanced baggage handling system, which was one of the most sophisticated and automated systems designed at the time. However, its implementation proved problematic, causing operational issues that contributed to the airport's opening being delayed by 16 months. Did you know that the airport's runway system was designed to be the most efficient and flexible of any airport globally? Its layout allows for simultaneous takeoffs and landings in almost any weather condition, reducing delays and improving safety. Next up, it's time to visit one of the most expensive hotels in the United States. The Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas presents a fascinating study in both engineering achievement and financial investment. Opened in December 2010, this resort and casino complex was developed at a staggering cost of approximately $5.3 billion, making it one of the most expensive hotel projects in the world. A unique aspect of the Cosmopolitan's construction is its vertical design, a necessity dictated by the limited space available on the Las Vegas Strip. Standing at nearly 600 feet tall, these towers house over 3,000 hotel rooms, alongside a vast array of amenities including a casino, retail spaces, restaurants, and entertainment venues. Did you know that the project faced financial challenges during its construction, largely due to the economic downturn in 2008? This led to changes in ownership and a significant injection of additional funds to complete the project. 
Moreover, The Cosmopolitan is renowned for its emphasis on art and aesthetic appeal, featuring a multi-million dollar art collection and striking design elements like the digital columns in its lobby. But the most expensive stadium in the United States truly has a staggering construction cost. SoFi Stadium, nestled in the heart of Inglewood, California, represents a pinnacle of architectural grandeur in the realm of sports and entertainment venues. Completed in September 2020, it not only serves as the home for the NFL's Los Angeles Rams and Chargers, but also as a monumental achievement in stadium construction, boasting a final cost of approximately $5.5 billion. One of the hallmarks of its design is the immense canopy that covers the stadium in the adjacent plaza. Another standout aspect of the stadium's construction is its below-ground design. To comply with height restrictions near Los Angeles International Airport, the stadium was built into the ground, with its playing field situated 100 feet below ground level. This required extensive excavation work and sophisticated engineering to ensure stability, contributing significantly to the project's overall costs. Did you know that SoFi Stadium's video board, known as the Oculus, is another example of its unparalleled amenities? This double-sided, 4K video board weighs approximately 2.2 million pounds and encircles the interior of the stadium, offering fans a 360-degree viewing experience that is as immersive as it is revolutionary. Moving over to Seattle, it's time to talk about one of the priciest bridges in the country. The Evergreen Point Floating Bridge, also known as the SR520 Bridge, stretches across Lake Washington to connect Seattle with its eastern suburbs. The bridge holds the title of the world's longest floating bridge, with a construction cost that soared to over $5.8 billion for the entire corridor project, highlighting the massive investment required. The bridge utilizes floating pontoons to support the roadway, a necessity due to the lake's depth and soft lake bed, which make traditional bridge foundations impractical. These pontoons are among the largest ever built, requiring precise engineering to ensure buoyancy and stability. Its construction involved not only the bridge but also the approach lanes and connecting roads, incorporating extensive environmental mitigation measures to protect the lake's ecosystem. Moreover, the bridge features state-of-the-art safety and traffic management systems, including wind speed sensors and a movable barrier system to optimize traffic flow. But a truly stunning achievement is constructing the most expensive building in the United States. That's what Apple achieved with its Apple Park project, their futuristic headquarters located in Cupertino, California. Completed in 2017, this remarkable campus was constructed at an estimated cost of approximately $6 billion. Designed by the renowned architect Norman Foster, Apple Park is often referred to as the spaceship due to its circular, futuristic design. Spanning 175 acres, the main building covers 2.8 million square feet and accommodates over 12,000 employees. The construction of such a massive structure required one of the largest uses of curved glass for the building's exterior to achieve the seamless, minimalist aesthetic envisioned by Steve Jobs. A key focus of Apple Park's construction was its environmental impact. The campus operates on 100% renewable energy, featuring solar panels that generate 17 megawatts of power, making it one of the largest solar energy installations in the world on a corporate site. Did you know that the landscaping of Apple Park is as meticulously designed as the building itself? Over 9,000 drought-resistant trees were planted, creating a lush canopy that integrates the campus seamlessly into the surrounding environment. While Denver International Airport was already an expensive airport project, New York's LaGuardia Redevelopment Project has stepped it up even further, showcasing a radical transformation at a cost of over $8 billion. This monumental project not only aims to modernize the airport, but also to redefine the passenger experience with cutting-edge design and technology. At the heart of this project is the construction of new terminals, featuring over a million square feet of space designed to handle tens of millions of passengers annually. The redevelopment introduces a strikingly innovative dual pedestrian bridge design for Terminal B, allowing planes to taxi underneath. This is a pioneering concept designed to improve taxiway efficiency and reduce gate congestion, a crucial advancement given LaGuardia's limited footprint. Funding this colossal project involves a sophisticated financial structure, including $4 billion for Terminal B alone. 
Engineering feats within the project include the strategic demolition and phased construction to keep the airport fully operational. Moreover, the incorporation of more than 13,000 square feet of new pedestrian bridges enhances connectivity and streamlines passenger flow, showcasing an impressive blend of functionality and aesthetic appeal. It's time to travel over to the West Coast for an even more expensive project on our list. The San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge Eastern Span Replacement was completed in 2013. This project was initiated in response to the vulnerability exposed by the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake. Its construction showcases a blend of architectural innovation and safety enhancements, with the final cost ballooning to approximately $8.6 billion, far exceeding initial estimates. One of the most striking features of the new Eastern Span is its self-anchored suspension design, a first of its kind for a single tower. This engineering marvel spans 247 feet and includes a main cable that loops around the roadway deck, anchoring it securely to itself rather than to the ground. Did you know that over 160,000 miles of wire were used to create the main cable of the bridge? Additionally, the bridge features a 525 feet tall tower constructed with four steel legs linked by sheer link beams designed to flex and dissipate seismic energy. It's time to fly back to New York for the most expensive subway mega project in the country. The East Side Access Project exemplifies the challenges and triumphs of urban tunneling and railway construction. With an estimated cost of over $11 billion, it ranks as one of the most expensive railway projects in the world. This ambitious project aims to connect the Long Island Railroad to a new terminal beneath Grand Central Terminal, offering a direct route that was previously unavailable to thousands of commuters. The east side access includes approximately eight miles of tunneling beneath Manhattan's densely packed urban environment. These tunnels were not merely dug, but meticulously carved through some of the most challenging geological conditions, including hard rock and water-bearing sediments. Did you know that the project necessitated the excavation of about 2 million cubic yards of rock? This is equivalent to filling the Empire State Building nearly two times. The construction also involves the creation of a new terminal beneath Grand Central, consisting of multiple levels of concourses and platforms. This terminal is being constructed more than 140 feet below street level, requiring innovative solutions for ventilation, lighting, and passenger flow. But that was not the most expensive tunneling project on this list just yet. The Central Artery Tunnel Project, famously known as the Big Dig, in Boston, Massachusetts, stands as one of the most complex urban infrastructure projects ever undertaken in the United States. Originally estimated at $2.8 billion, the project's costs skyrocketed to over $21.9 billion by its completion. Spanning from 1988 until 2006, the Big Dig aimed to address the chronic traffic congestion on Boston's central artery by relocating it underground and extending the Massachusetts Turnpike through a new tunnel under Boston Harbor. A key feature of the Big Dig was the construction of the Ted Williams Tunnel, the first major component completed in 1995, which extends I-90 to Logan Airport. Did you know that the project utilized over 3.8 million cubic yards of concrete, enough to lay a sidewalk three feet wide from Boston to San Francisco? The Leonard P. Zakim Bunker Hill Memorial Bridge is also part of this project, being the world's widest cable-stayed bridge, celebrated for its aesthetic appeal and structural design. But what about the most costly real estate development project in the United States? The Hudson Yards Redevelopment Project in New York City is a beacon of urban transformation, with an estimated total cost of over $25 billion. This colossal project has reshaped the west side of Manhattan, introducing a blend of high-rise residential buildings, office towers, and restaurants. One of the project's most innovative engineering feats is the platform built over the west side yard, a working train yard serving the Long Island Railroad. Constructed at a cost of approximately $1 billion, this platform covers 30 tracks, three rail tunnels, and two subway lines, all of which remain operational during construction. Another highlight is the vessel, a 16-story, honeycomb-like structure of interconnected staircases. 
Did you know the project includes a state-of-the-art waste management system designed to eliminate the need for traditional garbage trucks? This system, an investment in sustainability and efficiency, transports waste through a series of underground tubes to a central collection point. The development also prioritizes green spaces, with more than half of Hudson Yards dedicated to public plazas and gardens. But now it's time to talk about the longest and most expensive pipeline megaproject ever constructed in the country. The Trans-Alaska Pipeline System, stretching approximately 800 miles, represents one of the most significant achievements in pipeline construction. Completed in 1977 at a cost of $40 billion, the project was constructed to transport oil from North America's largest oil field in Prudhoe Bay to the ice-free port of Valdez. One of the most notable is its earthquake-proof design, featuring sliding supports that allow the pipeline to move during seismic activity without rupturing. Approximately half of the pipeline is elevated on more than 78,000 vertical support members to prevent the thawing of permafrost, which could destabilize the structure. This design allows cold air to circulate around the pipes, helping to maintain the permafrost's integrity. Did you know that the pipeline system includes the crossing of over 800 rivers and streams? The project scale necessitated the largest private air force at the time to transport workers and materials, highlighting the logistical challenges overcome during construction. The pipeline can transport up to 2.1 million barrels of oil per day, showcasing its critical role in the U.S. energy infrastructure. And topping it off, we have to talk about the most expensive construction feat in the United States. The California High Speed Rail Project is an epic venture into modernizing transportation with an initial estimate of around $33 billion that has since soared past $100 billion. Designed to connect the state's major urban centers, such as San Francisco and Los Angeles, with speeds capable of reaching 220 miles per hour, the project aims to slash travel times to under three hours across approximately 800 miles of track, projected to be the first of its kind in the country. A high-speed rail's completion date has been a moving target, currently anticipated for 2033. This timeline reflects the project's vast scope and the intricate engineering challenges it faces, including the construction of over 36 miles of tunnels through the Tehachapi and San Gabriel Mountains. An exemplar of sustainable transportation, the rail project is committed to operating on 100% renewable energy, with stringent environmental protections integrated into its development to minimize impacts on natural habitats. Despite facing financial scrutiny and logistical obstacles, such as securing adequate funding and navigating the complexities of state and federal regulations, the California high-speed rail continues to push forward. One of China's proudest achievements are their bridge construction projects. Therefore, we're paying a visit to the Kishui River Bridge, officially completed and opened to the public in 2019. This architectural marvel spans the Kishui River in Gizhou province, seamlessly connecting the cities of Zishui and Gilan. The bridge is part of a broader initiative to improve transportation links in the mountainous regions of southwest China, significantly reducing travel time between these cities from over an hour to just a few minutes. The Kishui River Bridge is noteworthy for its status as one of the highest bridges in the world. It rises approximately 304 meters above the river, with a total length of 1,280 meters, making it a significant achievement in China's bridge construction. The bridge's design follows a rigid frame type, with a span configuration that includes a large central span flanked by smaller approach spans, a design choice that optimizes both the structural integrity and the aesthetic appeal of the bridge. Construction of the Kishui River Bridge was a monumental task that required precise planning and execution. The project's total cost amounted to $236 million, a reflection of the extensive resources, labor, and materials invested into its realization. The construction phase involved the use of cutting-edge machinery and technologies, including high-strength concrete and steel, to ensure the bridge's ability to withstand the environmental challenges presented by its location. One of the most challenging aspects of the bridge's construction was the terrain of the Kishui River Valley itself. The steep and uneven landscape necessitated innovative construction methods, including the use of advanced cable crane systems to transport materials across the valley. 
The Kishui River Bridge not only serves as a vital transportation link, but also as a testament to the advancements in modern Chinese engineering and construction techniques. Besides bridges, China also invests a lot of capital into water management. To really put this into perspective, let's take a look at the South North Water Transfer Project. Launched in response to the acute water shortages faced by the northern provinces, including the densely populated and economically pivotal Beijing Tianjin Hebei region, this mega project aims to divert water from the Yangtze River in the south to the parched north through a series of canals, tunnels, and advanced pumping stations. Spanning over decades, with its inception dating back to planning stages in the late 20th century, the project is segmented into three distinct routes, the Eastern Route, the Central Route, and the yet-to-be-completed Western Route. Together, they have already transferred billions of cubic meters of water to the northern regions, substantially alleviating water stress in urban and agricultural areas. The financial scale of the South North Water Transfer Project is staggering, with estimates of the total investment surpassing $80 billion. This figure underscores the complexity and the extensive scope of the project which involves not only the construction of the physical infrastructure to facilitate the water transfer, but also significant environmental management measures to mitigate the impact on the ecosystems of both the source and recipient areas. The project features state-of-the-art tunneling techniques for crossing under major rivers and traversing diverse terrains, including mountains and urban areas. For example, the project utilizes some of the longest water conveyance tunnels in the world, with advanced boring machines to ensure minimal disruption to the surface. Additionally, it incorporates large-scale pumping stations, equipped with high-capacity pumps to lift water across significant elevations along the routes. Furthermore, the project's design incorporates extensive measures for water purification and quality control, ensuring that the transferred water meets the stringent standards required for drinking and irrigation. However, the South North Water Transfer Project is not without its challenges. The construction of the project's routes and reservoirs has necessitated the relocation of hundreds of thousands of people from their ancestral homes to make way for the infrastructure. This mass relocation has raised issues related to the resettlement process, including adequate compensation, preservation of cultural heritage, and the provision of new livelihood opportunities for those affected. Let's move to the next impressive Chinese megaproject, called the Chongqing Kunming High Speed Railway. This pivotal project, stretching over 720 kilometers or 447 miles, connects two major cities in southwest China, Chongqing and Kunming. The railway, part of China's grand plan to create a 30,000-kilometer high-speed rail network, underscores the nation's ambition to lead globally in rail technology. Costing approximately 100 billion yuan or 15 billion dollars, the Chongqing Kunming High Speed Railway is not just an economic investment but a technological showcase. The project features numerous tunnels and bridges, including the world renowned Wulan Mountain Super Bridge. The railway reduces the travel time between Chongqing and Kunming from over 20 hours to just 4.5 hours, significantly impacting the social and economic landscape of the region. It enhances accessibility, promotes tourism, and fosters economic integration between the southwestern provinces. The construction of this railway employed cutting-edge machinery and materials, with a focus on durability and safety. High-strength steel, advanced concrete composites, and state-of-the-art track-laying techniques were utilized, ensuring that the railway could withstand the region's seismic activity. The use of tunnel boring machines and bridge building gantries played a pivotal role in accelerating the construction pace, demonstrating China's prowess in leveraging technology for infrastructure development. One of the key challenges encountered during the construction was the environmental impact particularly in ecologically sensitive areas. The project team implemented several mitigation strategies, such as rerouting sections of the track, constructing wildlife crossings over and under the railway, and implementing strict construction practices to minimize the disturbance to the natural landscape. But the project has not been without its controversies, including concerns over land acquisition and environmental degradation. The government and project developers have faced criticism over the lack of transparency and adequate compensation for those affected. 
Despite these challenges, the Chongqing Kunming High Speed Railway remains a symbol of progress and a critical component of China's vision for a modern country. It's time to travel to Pudong International Airport, which serves as a crucial hub in East Asia. Officially opened on October 1, 1999, this airport not only serves as a vital artery for international travel but also stands as a symbol of modern engineering. With its strategic location in Pudong, Shanghai, it's designed to manage the demands of heavy passenger and cargo traffic, contributing significantly to the region's economic development. The airport's construction was a monumental project with an initial investment of approximately $1.67 billion for its first phase. This phase included the main terminal, a runway, and supporting transportation infrastructure, setting the stage for what would become one of the busiest airports in the world. The airport has since undergone several expansions, including the addition of Terminal 2 in 2008 and Terminal S1 for Spring Airlines in 2019, pushing its capacity and facilities to meet the growing demands of international travel. Covering an area of over 25 square miles, the airport features five total runways with the latest opening in 2020, where it only had two runways before. This expansion was critical to accommodate the airport's increasing traffic which saw over 76 million passengers in 2019, making it one of the top 10 busiest airports globally by passenger traffic. The terminal buildings are notable for their modern design, incorporating energy-efficient materials and systems. However, the airport's expansion has not been without challenges. The construction phases witnessed logistical challenges, including the coordination of a vast workforce and the seamless integration of new terminals and runways into the existing infrastructure without disrupting airport operations. These problems highlighted the complexities of executing large-scale infrastructure projects in a bustling urban setting. Pudong International Airport serves as a case study in modern airport construction, reflecting the challenges and achievements of building world-class infrastructure in the 21st century. The next Chinese megaproject is truly stunning, being among the highest bridges in China. I'm talking about the Pingtang Bridge, positioned in the rugged terrain of Gizhou Province. Completed in December 2019, this bridge is pivotal for local development, reducing travel times and linking communities previously separated by challenging terrain. The bridge's design incorporates a hybrid approach, melding elements of both cable-stayed and suspension bridge technologies. This innovative strategy was chosen to address the unique challenges posed by the site, including high winds and the need for a long span without intermediate supports. The design features three main pylons, with the tallest standing at an impressive height of 332 meters. These pylons support the bridge deck with a series of stay cables, which are crucial for maintaining the structure's stability and distributing loads evenly. With a main span of 1092 meters and a total length of 2135 meters, the Pingtang Bridge is among the world's longest span bridges. It hangs approximately 332 meters above a river, making it one of the highest bridges globally. This engineering feat required a budget of approximately 1.5 billion yuan, or $215 million, reflecting the complexity and scale of the construction effort. Construction of the Pingtang Bridge was a logistical and engineering challenge. The remote location and difficult terrain necessitated innovative solutions for transportation and assembly of large structural components. The Chinese project team placed a strong emphasis on environmental conservation, implementing measures to minimize the bridge's impact on the surrounding ecosystem. Strategies included careful routing of the bridge to avoid ecologically sensitive areas and efforts to preserve the natural landscape. China is also exceptional at building high into the sky, and that's why we're taking a look at the Shanghai Tower. Rising majestically above the Lujiazui skyline, the Shanghai Tower was conceived with the dual purpose of symbolizing Shanghai's global financial prominence and pioneering sustainable urban living concepts. With its completion in 2015, the tower not only achieved its aim of being a financial center, but also became a model for future eco-friendly skyscrapers. The project, which began construction in November 2008, faced a lengthy development phase before reaching its completion seven years later, reflecting the complex nature of constructing one of the world's tallest buildings. 
costing approximately $2.4 billion. The Shanghai Tower stands as a financial behemoth, indicative of the massive investment in creating a landmark that merges architectural innovation with environmental stewardship. Spanning an area of 380,000 square meters, this 632-meter tall skyscraper is not only a marvel of height but also of space and design. Featuring the world's second-fastest elevators, which ascend at a speed of 18 meters per second, the construction of the Shanghai Tower introduced several innovative techniques and materials to address the unique challenges posed by its design. One of the most notable is its double-skin facade, designed to insulate the building and reduce the need for heating, thereby significantly cutting energy costs. This outer layer wraps around the building, creating a buffer zone that acts as thermal insulation, a feature that is critical in Shanghai's variable climate. The Shanghai Tower employs a unique twisting form, designed to reduce wind loads on the building by 24%. However, like many other mega-projects, the Shanghai Tower faced unique challenges during construction. Building such a massive structure in the densely populated area of Lujiazui posed potential problems, including traffic congestion and strain on local resources. Moreover, the financial viability of the project was questioned, with skeptics pointing to the high vacancy rates of office spaces in Shanghai and wondering whether the tower would become a vertical ghost town. As of 2019, 55 out of 128 floors sit empty, which is close to 50%. China is not only industry-leading in constructing bridges and railways, but also creates stunning new cities. Let's dive into Tianjin Eco City, which is designed to house approximately 350,000 residents in an area covering about 19 square miles. The project emerged from mutual concerns over rapid urbanization, environmental degradation, leading to its initiation in 2008. The financial blueprint of the Tianjin Eco City is as ambitious as its environmental targets, with investment figures projected to be near $10 billion, aiming to cover infrastructure, residential, and commercial development costs. This funding is directed towards not just constructing buildings, but also towards creating an integrated environment that supports sustainable living practices across energy use, water management, and waste disposal. One of the critical aspects of the Tianjin Eco City is its emphasis on green building materials and advanced construction technologies. The city employs a variety of eco-friendly materials, including recycled concrete and sustainable timber. Innovative construction methods are utilized to ensure energy efficiency and resource conservation. These include the use of prefabricated parts to reduce construction waste and the implementation of smart technologies for water and energy management, showcasing a comprehensive approach to sustainable urban development. Despite its noble aspirations, skepticism arose over the feasibility of transforming a polluted, saline wasteland into a thriving eco-city. Concerns were also raised regarding the project's scalability and whether it could truly be replicated in other contexts, considering the significant initial investment and the need for technological innovation. The project encountered practical hurdles in attracting residents and businesses, crucial for the city's sustainability. The eco-city's location, distant from Tianjin's urban core, and the premium cost of living posed barriers to rapid population growth. This challenge highlighted the difficulty of balancing environmental goals with economic and social viability, a crucial lesson for future eco-city projects. Despite these obstacles, the Tianjin eco-city continues to evolve, with ongoing construction and development reflecting both the challenges and potential of sustainable urban living. It's time to visit Norway, which has constructed a crucial underwater project called the Orman Lange Gas Pipeline. Spanning an impressive 1,200 kilometers, it connects the Orman Lange field in the Norwegian Sea to the United Kingdom, specifically to the processing plant at Nyhamna, Norway. Commissioned in 2007, this pipeline plays a crucial role in securing energy supplies in the region, marking a significant achievement in the field of energy infrastructure. Constructed at a cost of over $10 billion, the Orman Lange Gas Pipeline's engineering required innovative solutions to navigate the challenging deep water conditions of the Norwegian Sea, including depths of up to 1,100 meters. This project also stood out for its environmental and technical challenges, particularly the need to minimize impacts on the delicate marine ecosystem and address the harsh conditions found in the North Sea. 
The United States also has constructed some really impressive underwater mega projects, such as the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, stretching over the waters of the Chesapeake Bay to connect Virginia's eastern shore with the mainland. Opened in 1964 and expanded over the years, this 23-mile marvel is not just a bridge but a series of bridges, tunnels, and artificial islands. Constructed at a cost of approximately $200 million at its inception, with subsequent expansions adding to the investment, the Bay Tunnel stands as a testament to human ingenuity in overcoming geographical challenges. The structure includes two one-mile tunnels that dive beneath the bay, allowing ships to pass unimpeded above, while miles of low-lying trestle bridges provide breathtaking views of the surrounding waters. The use of the bridge-tunnel combination was a pioneering approach, providing a direct, uninterrupted flow of traffic across the bay and demonstrating a harmonious blend of functionality. But Japan is arguably even better at constructing underwater tunnels, because they constructed the much longer Seiken Tunnel, stretching 54 kilometers, with a staggering 23 kilometers lying under the seabed. It connects the islands of Honshu and Hokkaido, piercing through the Tsugaru Strait. Completed in 1988 after nearly two decades of construction, the tunnel resolves the overcoming of geographical isolation and enhances connectivity. With an overall cost of approximately $3.6 billion, the Seiken Tunnel's construction presented formidable hurdles, including dealing with the seismic volatility of the region. The tunnel now serves as a critical link for passengers and freight trains, being one of the few ways to access the island. Our next underwater project is the only underwater research laboratory in the world, and it's called the Aquarius Reef Base, located in the United States. Anchored 62 feet or 19 meters below the surface near Key Largo, this remarkable facility offers scientists a unique aquatic vantage point for studying marine biology, underwater physiology, and the impacts of climate change on coral reefs. Established in 1986, Aquarius has facilitated groundbreaking research by allowing researchers to live and work in the ocean's depths for extended periods. The 400-square-foot habitat is equipped with living quarters, laboratories, and communication systems, enabling teams to dive deeper into their research without the daily decompression requirements that limit bottom time for surface divers. Being the only underwater lab in operation, the Aquarius Reef Base exemplifies human ingenuity in pursuit of scientific knowledge, turning the ocean's alien environment into a classroom. The next project on our list is a tunnel that's connecting two major countries, the Famarn Belt Fixed Link. This ambitious project, with an estimated cost of 7.4 billion euros, is not just another infrastructure endeavor, it's a bold leap towards uniting regions and enhancing mobility in Europe by connecting Germany and Denmark. Spanning approximately 18 kilometers, it's poised to become the world's longest immersed tunnel, designed for both rail and road traffic. The construction employs the use of specially designed ships to lay sections of the tunnel on the seabed, a method that underscores the innovative spirit of this undertaking. The tunnel comprises 79 individual segments, each meticulously fabricated off-site, showcasing the meticulous planning and precision that underpin this colossal project. The planned completion date for this project is unknown, but they're aiming to open it somewhere in 2029. While underwater tunnels are usually used for mobility, Canada is utilizing them for something else with their Seymour Capilano water filtration project. Nestled in the verdant landscapes of British Columbia, Canada, the tunnel is an engineering marvel designed to ensure the provision of clean, safe drinking water to the Vancouver metropolitan area. This project is distinguished by its expansive network of tunnels, stretching over 7.1 kilometers, which serve as conduits for transferring water between the Seymour Reservoir and the Capilano Reservoir. Constructed at a cost of over 600 million Canadian dollars, the project underscores the critical importance of sustainable water management in urban planning. The construction process showcased a blend of traditional tunneling methods and modern technological innovations. Two massive tunnel boring machines were deployed, each weighing over 1,000 tons carving through the mountainous terrain with precision. The project became operational in May 2010, and ever since it has been a vital part of the region. It's time to move on to one of the biggest pipeline megaprojects in the world, called the Nord Stream Gas Pipeline. 
Stretching beneath the Baltic Sea to connect Russia with Germany, the strategic pipeline operation since November 2011 spans approximately 1224 kilometers, making it one of the longest offshore gas pipelines in the world. With a total project cost estimated at 8.8 .8 billion euros, the Nord Stream has capacity to transport up to 55 billion cubic meters of gas annually, playing a crucial role in ensuring energy security and diversification of supply routes in Europe. Constructed using state-of-the-art technology, the pipeline comprises two parallel lines, each made from tens of thousands of steel pipes welded together on board specialized vessels. These pipes, coated for corrosion resistance, were laid on the seabed by some of the world's most advanced laying ships, navigating through challenging marine conditions. Despite its technical achievements, Nord Stream has been mired in controversy. Critics argue that it increases European dependency on Russian gas, posing geopolitical risks. Environmental groups have also raised concerns about the potential impacts on the Baltic Sea's delicate ecosystem. Yet, proponents highlight its contribution to energy security and lower carbon emissions compared to coal and oil. A country that can obviously not be missing from this list is China, who has their own fair share of underwater mega-projects. Let's dive into the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge Tunnel. Overcoming the physical and economic divide between Hong Kong and Zhuhai, this project was completed in October 2018 consisting of a series of bridges and tunnels spanning approximately 55 kilometers, making it one of the longest sea-crossing structures in the world. With a budget exceeding $18.8 .8 billion, the project is designed to facilitate the flow of people and goods, strengthening connectivity and economic integration within the Pearl River Delta region. At the heart of this colossal structure is a 6.7-kilometer underwater tunnel, descending up to 40 meters below the sea level, seamlessly connecting two artificial islands. This tunnel was a critical solution to avoid disrupting the busy maritime lanes in the Pearl River estuary. The construction of the tunnels required innovative engineering techniques, including the use of immersed tube tunnel methods for the underwater sections. While the next underwater project may not be as big, the Poseidon Underwater Hotel is just as remarkable. This groundbreaking project, aiming to be nestled in the clear turquoise waters of Fiji, extends the frontier of hospitality into the aquatic realm. The hotel is designed to feature 25 suites, each encased in a 70mm thick transparent acrylic shell, providing 360-degree views of the vibrant marine ecosystem. With an estimated construction cost of $105 million, the hotel's ambition is not just to provide luxury but to pioneer an eco-friendly engineering. The structure is planned to be anchored at a depth of 40 meters below the sea level, covering an area of approximately 5,000 square meters. It's time to visit the United Kingdom, where a tunnel is being constructed for an ambitious purpose. The Thames Tideway Tunnel aims to tackle London's over-a-century-old sewage system problem. Officially initiated in 2016, with an estimated completion by 2025, this massive undertaking is designed to prevent millions of tons of untreated sewage from entering the Thames River each year. Stretching over 25 kilometers and delving up to 65 meters below the river, the tunnel is a critical component of modernizing London's sewage disposal and treatment capabilities. Costing approximately 4.9 billion pounds, the project is not just an engineering marvel but also a significant environmental initiative. By intercepting overflow from existing Victorian sewers, the tunnel will ensure that the Thames remains cleaner and more vibrant for future generations. Despite its environmental benefits, the Thames Tideway Tunnel has faced controversy, particularly regarding its financial impact on residents through increased water bills. Crossing the North Sea, it's time to visit Norway for a massive underwater megaproject. Norway's Coastal Highway Project is an unparalleled infrastructure endeavor aimed at revolutionizing travel along the country's rugged western coast. With an estimated cost of $40 billion, this ambitious project seeks to eliminate the need for seven ferry crossings by connecting the cities of Kristiansand and the south to Trondheim and the north through a continuous, ferry-free highway. Spanning over 1,100 kilometers, it involves the construction of bridges, tunnels, and causeways designed to navigate the challenging Norwegian underwater terrain and weather conditions. 
A highlight of the project is the proposed construction of the world's longest and deepest submerged floating tunnel, a feat of engineering that exemplifies Norway's innovative approach to overcoming geographical obstacles. This tunnel alone, part of the route across the Sodnefjord, is expected to stretch 3.7 kilometers in length and reach depths of up to 392 meters below sea level. Scheduled for completion in 2050, the Coastal Highway Project not only aims to significantly reduce travel time across the western coast, but also to boost economic growth and connectivity in remote regions. Let's transition to another underwater project that is connecting cities, called the Busan Geoja Fixed Link. Spanning an impressive length of 8.2 kilometers, this fixed link connects the bustling city of Busan with the scenic island of Geoja in South Korea, serving as a vital artery that significantly reduces travel time. Constructed at a cost of approximately $800 million, the project was completed in 2010 after five years of relentless work. The fixed link is a hybrid structure comprising both bridges and underwater tunnels, ingeniously designed to navigate the challenges posed by the area's deep waters. The centerpiece of this engineering feat is a 3.7-kilometer immersed tunnel, one of the longest of its kind in the world, which plunges beneath the sea to allow ships to pass unimpeded above. Despite its successes, the project was not without its challenges. Environmental concerns were raised regarding the impact on the marine ecosystem, leading to stringent measures being implemented to mitigate damage. Financial obstacles also loomed large, with debates on the project's cost-effectiveness and the burden on public resources sparking rigorous discussions. Now it's time for a different type of underwater project, and for that we have to travel to the United States, where the Lake Mead Intake No. 3 tackles the critical issue of water scarcity. This monumental project, costing an impressive $817 million, was driven by the urgent need to secure a reliable water supply for Las Vegas, a city that depends heavily on the waters of Lake Mead. Initiated in 2008 and completed in 2015, the project involved drilling a three-mile-long tunnel beneath Lake Mead, one of the largest man-made lakes in the United States. This was no ordinary task. It required the use of a 1,500-ton tunnel boring machine, cutting through the earth at depths reaching 600 feet below the lake's surface. The purpose? To construct a new intake capable of drawing water from the lake's depths, ensuring access to clean water even as lake levels fluctuated perilously low due to prolonged drought conditions. The construction of intake number three was not just about securing a water source, it was about innovating for the future. Engineers and workers faced the daunting challenge of working in an environment where temperatures soared and the risk of flooding within the tunnel was a constant threat. Let's travel to the Netherlands next for one of the most impressive underwater projects on the list so far. The Western Scheldt Tunnel, completed in 2003 at a cost of approximately 750 million euros, is not just a passage but a lifeline connecting the regions of Zeeuws Vlaanderen and South Beveland and significantly reducing travel time in the area. Spanning an impressive 6.6 .6 kilometers, the Western Scheldt Tunnel holds the title of the longest tunnel in the Netherlands. Constructed using the immersed tube method, it consists of segments that were meticulously built on land and then submerged and connected beneath the Scheldt River. This construction approach required precision and innovation, including the use of GPS technology to ensure exact alignment of the tunnel sections. But how about a tunnel that has been connecting two countries for over two decades? Let's check out the Orson Tunnel, which is part of the Orson link that connects Denmark and Sweden, facilitating unprecedented connectivity between the two countries since its completion in 2000. This project, with a total cost of around 4 billion euros for the entire Orsund link, includes a bridge, an artificial island, and the tunnel itself, showcasing a blend of engineering ingenuity and cooperation across borders. Stretching 4 kilometers beneath the Orsund Strait, the tunnel complements the 8-kilometer bridge to form a comprehensive transport route. The construction of the tunnel employed the cut-and-cover method where a trench was excavated on the seabed and prefabricated tunnel sections were then lowered into place. The Orson Tunnel has significantly reduced travel time between Denmark and Sweden, bolstering economic ties and cultural exchange. While that tunnel might be long, it's time to visit a tunnel that's over 10 times as long.
the Channel Tunnel, an engineering feat that bridged the UK and France beneath the English Channel, stands as a symbol of European unity and technological ambition. Completed in 1994 at a cost of £12 billion, this project was one of the most significant engineering projects of the 20th century. Spanning 50.45 kilometers with 37.9 kilometers beneath the sea, the Channel Tunnel holds the record for the longest undersea portion of any tunnel in the world. The construction involved the use of 11 tunnel boring machines to carve through the chalk marl beneath the seabed. This Herculean task required unprecedented coordination between British and French construction teams. The tunnel comprises three separate tubes, two for rail traffic and a smaller service tunnel that acts as an emergency escape route. The use of precast concrete linings to reinforce the tunnel walls was a critical component of the construction strategy, ensuring the tunnel's durability and safety. Today, the Channel Tunnel is a vital link for commerce and travel between the UK and continental Europe, facilitating the seamless transit of millions of passengers and tons of freight annually. But the underwater megaprojects can get much longer than that. The Baltic Pipe project was completed in 2022 at a cost of approximately 1.6 billion euros, and it stretches over 900 kilometers, forging a direct link between Norway's gas fields and Poland, with passages through Denmark. Its primary aim is to diversify energy sources and reduce Central and Eastern European countries' dependence on Russian gas, showcasing a pivotal shift towards sustainable and secure energy supplies. The construction of the Baltic Pipe involved laying underwater pipelines across the North Sea, a challenging endeavor that required advanced engineering techniques. Specialized ships were deployed to lay the pipes on the seabed, ensuring minimal disruption to commercial navigation routes. This project is notable not just for its engineering achievements, but also for its role in enhancing political cooperation among European nations. By providing a stable, reliable source of natural gas, the Baltic Pipe supports Europe's goals of energy independence and sustainability, relying less on Russia's Nord Stream Pipe. Now let's move to an underwater project that does not yet exist and that would break many records if it was being constructed. The Transatlantic Tunnel connecting New York to London is a testament to human ambition and engineering prowess. While not yet a reality, the concept alone pushes the boundaries of our current engineering capabilities and sparks discussions on the potential advancements required to make it possible. The envisioned transatlantic tunnel, stretching over 35 miles across the Atlantic Ocean's floor, showcases a blend of audacious goals and cutting-edge technology. Such a project would not only redefine international travel, cutting down flight times from seven hours to just under an hour by train, but also represent a monumental leap in construction methodologies. Building this underwater passage would necessitate revolutionary materials and construction techniques capable of withstanding the immense pressures of the deep sea and the tectonic activities beneath the ocean floor. The cost, running into the trillions of dollars, and the construction timeline spanning decades, reflect the project's unprecedented scale and complexity. The tunnel's conception involves massive, underwater tunnel boring machines and innovative materials for the tunnel structure, designed to endure the harsh conditions. But the next underwater project is going to be a lot more feasible. The Gibraltar Strait Tunnel seeks to connect Europe and Africa, specifically Spain to Morocco, through a 14-kilometer underwater rail tunnel. This endeavor not only aims to bridge two continents, but also to significantly enhance economic and cultural exchanges between them. The project, with an estimated cost that could exceed $20 billion, is a testament to the potential of modern engineering to overcome geographical barriers. Construction of such a tunnel presents formidable challenges, from the deep waters of the Strait of Gibraltar, with depths up to 900 meters, to the seismic activity in the region. The proposed tunnel would be among the world's longest underwater tunnels, dwarfing existing ones in both ambition and technical complexity. Engineers are considering innovative boring techniques and special materials to ensure the tunnel's integrity and safety, taking lessons from other underwater projects like the Channel Tunnel between France and the United Kingdom.